perfect fall day turning into a perfect fall night. The final piece of the puzzle, high school football. Welcome, everyone, to Game Day, live on the day.com. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. And we are at Montville High School, where we are preparing for what should be a wonderful game tonight between a building 2-2 two two Montville High School Indians and an undefeated New London High School Whaler team. And, Keith, that undefeated is really the story for Coach Juan Roman right now. Yeah, 3-0 and on this early season so far, Casey. They're coming off of a bye week. And, you know, a lot of questions about this team, a lot of anticipation. Uh, listen, Juan Roman's got this program headed in the right direction, Casey, and this is a big-time ball game on the road to take on a real tough, gritty Montville team. Yep, Montville has been bitten by injuries in the early going. They will be without three of their starters tonight. You see at midfield right now uh, what was the starting quarterback to start this year, Andrew Patheric. Uh, is out uh, along with two other players. Keith, why don't you give us a little update on the injuries that the Indians are facing? Uh, the Indians have been snake-bitten for the last couple of years, Casey. A couple of the tailbacks out. They've got a sophomore, a quarterback. So, you know, Coach Tanner uh, Grove has had to patchwork his lineup the last few years, but he's got some kids willing to step up and take on leadership roles. The quarterback position, the big thing so, so far for the Indians. Yeah, much like the New England Patriot manager, you yeah. know, next, get next guy up, that's what they're facing right now. Tonight they will be without Sam Curry. Uh, they will be, of course, without Petherick, and they will be without linebacker K.J. Fletcher. All three out for tonight's game with various injuries. Big keys to the game tonight, Casey O'Neill. We talked to both coaches last night in Montville. Tanner Grove says we need to tackle well. We don't. No turnovers and play penalty-free, mistake-free football across the board for us to have an opportunity to be uh, competitive tonight. As for Juan Roman and his staff, Juan came out and, and said it last night. Execution and toughness. Uh, this is a tough Montville team. They're, they're expecting nothing less than that. So we need to execute and be tough. I mean, I think you know, when you talk to him about the bye week too, Casey, he said they had a chance to coach the kids and work on things. And, and, you know, and the bye week kind of helped them in week three. A lot of things to talk about. New London has won the toss. They will receive. But first, our national anthem. Montville High School Marching Band. Wonderful rendition of the National Anthem. Beautiful fall night here for football at Montville High School. One of my favorite places to come watch a game. Full house here tonight. It is probably the only game in town in the ECC. So you see a lot of old players, a lot of, a lot of coaches, a lot of people checking things out and checking out that New London Whaler team, Casey. And again, they're coming off of a bye week. Coach Roman and his staff went back to basics a little bit. Showed kids some film. Had a chance to coach, teach. And they actually had practice. You know, during the season, the season goes by so fast that you don't get a chance to go back and work on the little things. New London has done that in the last two weeks. Yeah, and the uh, way it works, and during your bye week, you're not allowed to have uh, contact, full contact, no tackling, right. no hitting. So they had to go back and do the basics, and that bye week, like you said, was a teaching moment for them. But it's something, you're right, Keith, something about Montville on a Friday night in yeah. the fall. Maybe it's the black and orange, but it feels like football. Yeah, Montville, feel, they feel very good about their team. They come off of a big win against Ledger last week, and they got tough games back-to-back -back weeks. New London and Killingly, Casey. Montville comes out, dressed head-to-toe in the home black. New London in their sharp road uniforms, white tops, yellow pants, little gold and green striping. And I give you the voice of game day for kickoff, my good friend, Mr. Casey O'Neill. All right, going right to left on your screen, Emmanuel Mayfield ready to kick off for Montville. Monty Johnson is the deep man standing at his own 10-yard line for the Whalers. Mayfield with a onside kick. We thought we might see that early owing, and we did, but it was deftly covered 
by, looks like, Trent Robledo, Trent Tom, uh, Robledo Thompson, who is the son of New London High School principal, Tommy Thompson. Hey, you called it. This is a kitchen sink type of game for the Montville Indians. Going to throw out all the bags of tricks tonight just before Halloween. A month before Halloween, onside's kick failed. Going to set up New London Casey on the Montville side of the field at the 49-yard line. Yeah, the, yeah, I think it was uh, no surprise to anyone uh, that, no. that that was something they might look at. But now New London on the short side of the field, starting in Montville territory at the 49-yard line. Of course, senior quarterback Melquan Gomez under center. Efren Santiago, handoff up the middle to Commander. Commander looking to the bounce to the outside. He's got the sideline. Commander's at the 20-yard line. Cuts it again. Gets a block from Roman. He's at the 5. He cuts it one more time in. Touchdown, New London Whalers. No flags. First play of the game. 6 nothing. What a start. Just like that, 49 yards on the first play from scrimmage from Jacob Commander. And he's healthy, and he is ready to roll for the Whalers. Absolutely the worst possible start for Montville, the failed onside kick, and then immediately on the fullback dive, nothing fancy about it, 49-yard touchdown run by Commander, and a very, very skillful and adept run, and a great block from Major Roman down the sideline. Yeah, he's a playmaker, and again, he's one of those kids for New London, that's been kind of nicked up a little bit, you know, and uh, you know, Juan Roman said that they're healthy, Casey. Extra point is blocked. Zay Alvarez on the extra point. That is blocked. So a six nothing New London lead. Eleven forty three remaining in the first period. They didn't even they didn't even break a sweat yet. Well, I'm gonna have to regroup here if you're Montville a little bit. The onside uh, kick failed, and then the uh, the big uh, uppercut, the forty nine yard touchdown run by Jacob Commander. And again, sophomore player, been a little nicked up the first couple of games, showing you a big taste of what he can do in the open field. That New London team may have come of age a little bit last year. They, they got beat bad by a lot. They got hurt. They lost some players. Gomez struggled in his first year under center. Uh, they, you know, Commander was only a freshman. Now Gomez is the experienced senior. Commander has some, some mileage on, on those tires. And then playmakers like Monty Johnson and Billy Clark. Yeah, and, very talented. And Efren Santiago. Now all of a yep. sudden the skilled players are coming in. And you know, Juan, like you said, Juan Roman's going to have them disciplined. So. Uh, he's all business, Casey. He was down in the field before the game and you know, listen, uh, what are you doing walking? Get off your heels. You got a football game tonight. Well, the players got their message. First play of the game, boom, 49 yards for a touchdown by Commander. Mayfield and Clark stand deep at their own 10-yard line for Montville, awaiting the kick of Alvarez. High end over end kick. It's going to be taken by Clark. Clark heads straight up the field and gets to about the 28-yard line before he's wrapped up. Tackle made out there by uh at the 30-yard line, and that's where Montville will have its first possession. Montville comes out again, very young at the quarterback position, a couple of tailbacks out, uh, some size up front, and they're going to just you know, do their thing. They'll play tough, uh, old-fashioned Montville Indian football. First chance to see the New London High School defense, and we asked Coach Roman, who's, got, who's the important player? And he said, yep. whoever's playing on the other side of Major Roman. Teams have been very reluctant yeah. to run the ball at Roman, so rightfully so. Whoever's playing on the other side of the field needs to tackle well. Luke Hall, sophomore quarterback under center, in motion, was Clark, and we have a flag on the play. We're going to get an illegal procedure against Montville. Again, not a good start backing him up five yeah, yards. False start that time by the tight end jumping out of his uh, three point stance. Again, penalty-free football, no turnovers, and tackle well. The keys to Montville for victory tonight. Now, Montville has a weapon, wide receiver uh, Bradley Johnson, and we've got Johnson and Johnson on the outside because Monty Johnson is going to be playing him one-on-one. -on -one. So Montville sends twin receivers, Clark and Johnson, wide left. Handoff goes straight up the middle for a gain of about three yards off of left tackle. That was Joe Sotero on the carry, and not a lot there. We'll bring up second down and long, call it about uh, 12. Again, a basic 4-4 front for the uh, New London Whalers team. And again, they're going to rotate a lot of different people around, uh, Casey, and bring a lot of pressure you know, to the ball handlers. And, and again, you talked last night to, to Major Roman, uh, to Juan Roman, and he said, run away from Major Roman. Second down and 12. Movement again that time by the New London, excuse me, by the Montville offensive line. Thank so, 
three pay plays, two penalties. You know, part of the issue with being in the booth with a legend like Mike McLaughlin yeah. is that Mike McLaughlin knows everyone who has yeah. ever played football in southeastern Connecticut over the last century. So they, they all want to say hello. He does. If Doug, Doug DeBose is not coming out of if the field. Tonight. If they're here, they want to say hello. It's it's. They got Ronnie Adams in the booth. We all oh, come yeah, out. We have luminaries, luminaries in the yes, booth tonight. Yeah. Handoff. Montville this time to Mayfield. And Mayfield will get up past the original line of scrimmage. Not much more there. Check that. Call that Satiro again. Satiro will get back up to a little bit past the original line of scrimmage. Call it third now and a long nine. Man down in the offensive line for the Montville Indians. And a tough start here for the for the Montville Ball Club. Again, two out of their first four plays, illegal procedure penalties. And, again, that's one of the things that they wanted to stay away from as a team and as a staff. Tanner Gross, a mistake-free, penalty-free football. We can't hurt ourselves against this very talented New London team. Well, if you do hurt yourselves or if anyone else hurts you, you can head on down to Lawrence and Memorial Hospitals. Walk-in centers all throughout southeastern Connecticut. No appointment necessary. Lawrence Memorial Hospitals helping you out with fantastic customer service as well as quality medical care. So if you have some problem, go down to Lawrence and Memorial Hospital all over southeastern Connecticut. New locations all the time. Walk-in clinics available. What if i got to get there? Well, if you got to get there and you don't have transportation, you can go on down to M.J. Sullivan Auto. <laughs> down at the corner of Broad and Coleman Street in New London, M.J. Sullivan Auto with all of your automotive needs. Go get yourself some financing, possibly get yourself a brand-new car, and you can drive yourself down to Lawrence Memorial. M.J. Sullivan Auto.com. In New London, Connecticut. Corner of Broad and Coleman Street. Home with the New London Whalers. Bit of a slow start here to the game tonight after the fireworks on the opening play by Jacob Commander. You know, Montville had... About now, granted, we talked about Ledger being, uh, you know, in, in a bit of a flux right now. Yeah. But Montville did uh, literally everything you could do. So yes, Ledger's down, but they still went out and whacked them forty to nothing last week. They held they, them to minus thirty-two yeah. yards of offense. So you can't you, you can't do a better job than that. That being said, this next two weeks, when they looked at their schedule preseason, Montville probably said, "We've got Ledger, New London, Killingly. That's the that's the part of the schedule." Well, they got through. Ledger. Yeah. Next week is Killingly. Yep. Uh, you know, a very physical New London team. This is this is definitely the uh, you know feast or famine part yeah, yeah, of their season. Yeah, the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Bermuda Biangle of their uh, Nick Tibbetts, uh, the injured um, Montville player, tight end slash tailback coming off the field. Glidden is the tailback. In motion goes Clark. Going to throw, and nothing there for Hall, and he'll be. Brought down after he scrambles and moves forward from maybe three. Nothing there. A lot of pressure from New London. And Montville's going to have to punt after what was a very ugly and inefficient first uh, possession on their part. Yeah, a couple penalties there and uh, really put themselves behind the eight ball a little bit. We'll bring up a punting situation. Fourth and four from their own 35. Elijah Parker and Monty Johnson stand at their own 30, awaiting the kick from Greg Clark. And we'll have another penalty flag on the play. More whistles. We'll see what's happening down there. A timeout on the field, I do believe. Timeout, New London. Timeout, New London. With 9:49 remaining in the first period, New London on top, six to nothing. Uh, of course, out of town scoreboard. There is no real out of town yeah, scoreboard really. for you. The game, what, we're, the game we're looking at tomorrow is the Staples NFA game. What there is, however, is the Major League Baseball playoffs. Sure. Where the Toronto Blue Jays went two games up on the Texas Rangers, hitting four home runs against U Darvish today. They yeah. won that game 5-3. Boston Red Sox trail 5-0 yeah. in the bottom of the fifth inning to Cleveland, in danger of going two down before they head home. That home field advantage looms large now. And the Los Angeles Dodgers jumped up early on Max Scherzer. They got a 4-0 lead, bottom of the third inning in Washington. Clayton Kershaw on the mound for the Dodgers. Later on tonight, the San Francisco Giants and Johnny Cueto had to face John Lester and the Chicago Cubs. Best record in all of baseball. Clark standing at his own 20-yard line. Snap is high, but he fields it. Gets the kick off. It's high, spiraling, coming down. And we're going to have a penalty as Elijah Parker was interfield with. It's picked up by Montville, and it's going to be returned by Andrew Longton all the way for a touchdown on the muffed kick that will, be all for, that will be all for not right there. But that was going to be that's going to be a penalty there as Montville jumped the gun. They did not allow Parker. They hit Parker before he could catch the football. 
And so that return by Longden will go for not, and New London, in fact, will be beneficiaries of the penalty. Six plays from scrimmage thus far for the Montville Indians. Half of those plays, three of them, have been penalties. Yeah, not not at all. What, Sloppy start. No, not what Tanner Grove wanted for his. Uh, he said that they needed to be penalty free. Yeah, very uncharacteristic of this Montville Indian ball club. You see Tanner Grove on the sideline just with his hands down on his hips, just a little bit frustrated right now with his troops. Well, what happens when you're playing a team that is maybe a little bit more talented than you are? Yeah. What happens is in order to beat a team that's more talented than you, you have to be more disciplined. But what ends up happening a lot of times... press a little bit. ...is you cheat a little bit. Yeah, you cheat, I, not, not in a dishonest way, but sure. you try to jump the snap yeah. just beforehand, and you try to... Try to make a play, popping somebody on special teams. Exactly. Yeah. You're trying to do just a little bit extra because you know that you got to have the advantage, and then what happens is you get penalties and turnovers and, and things like that. So... New London will have its second possession of the game, and after they mark off the penalty, uh, New London will have the ball in great field position again. They started their first drive at the Montville 49. They will start this drive at the Montville 45-yard line. <laughs> watch, watch out for number 30 on this play. Did you watch the Red Sox last night? You stand for the whole game? Yes, and I watched uh, up until I had to leave, and then I listened to it on in the car. And uh, I did not, I did not know the score until I walked in. You told me that they were down four nothing, and I quickly threw David Price under the bus. Roman goes out wide right. Santiago and Commander are the I formation behind Melquan Gomez. Gomez pitches left to Santiago. He's untouched to the corner. Gets the sideline, still on his feet. Down the sideline he goes. Cuts back inside. Efren Santiago, maximum effort to the ten yard line, and. Tackle well, no penalties. The first two things Coach Tanner Grove said they needed to do, absent so far in this game. Too easy for the New Orleans Whaler offense, Casey. Two runs totaling 82 yards, the first two plays from scrimmage, and just much too easy for this Whaler team. Now, Captain Efren Santiago was not even touched. Gio Lopez goes out wide left along with Elijah Loyer. Major Roman wide right. Pitch right this time to Efren Santiago, almost fumbles the pitch. It was a little low, but after getting an initial hit, he drives forward, gets past the original line of scrimmage, gain of three on the play. Almost a turnover that time by the Whalers, but Santiago made something out of nothing. Yeah, and again, Montville's going to wrap up on those tackles, and they had Santiago in the hole, Casey. Stopped for maybe a, a one-yard loss. He kept his legs moving, turned it into a two-yard gain. Negative into a positive because of the hustle play by Efron Santiago. It's going to be second down and seven, ball... Marked down right around the 10-yard line for New London. They lead 6-0 here in the first period, 8.28 remaining. Major Roman split wide right. Loyer and Gio Lopez split left. Santiago is the tailback. Gomez rolls, going to keep it himself, nothing there. Fall back to the middle of the field, and he'll gain about three inside the 10-yard line. It'll be third down. You know, with all the weapons, too, that New London has all over the field, you know, Monty Johnson, the Major Roman, uh, Commander, Santiago, we've seen them all. You know, Gomez is another one. Add him to the list. He, he can make plays with his feet as well as his arm. Yeah, he, uh, give him credit. We saw him last year, football, basketball. He spent the entire offseason from the end of basketball season last year working yeah. on improving his strength, his conditioning, and it has been a rem he, ha he looks amazing. He's done an amazing job transforming his body. We saw him at Summer League and Passing League this year. He told me he was very committed to this New Year's team. Same formation for the Whalers on third and five. Gomez to throw. Throws it out in the flat to Loyer. Loyer trying to break a tackle and can't do it. Elijah Loyer on the reception, but it's going to be short. I think with the kicking game of the Whalers, you're going to see them go for it here on fourth and five. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about that, Casey. A nice job that time tackling on the edge by the Montville cornerback. Again, Chris tackling, hawking to the ball. We talked with Coach Tanner Grove. How do you, you asked him, how do you stop Major Roman? And he said you can either double him up, put your best player on him and hope for the best, or just throw as many different yeah, looks at him looks. as you can. So far, it looks like they are just trying to take him away, as they've had two people up on his side of the and, field at all times. And this is a good time for a jump ball to Major Roman in the corner, fourth down from the 5-6 yard line. Double coverage, though, my friend. Keep an eye on him, though. Eye formation for the Whalers. Handoff goes to Commander straight up the middle, and it's going to be nothing there. Great defensive stand that time by the Montville High School Indians, led, of course, by all-everything linebacker Jack Ware. And nothing there for the Whalers, turnover on down. Yeah, a bit of an option look that time by uh, New London as, you know, Commander took the ball and, and just had nothing going up front. Gomez should have pulled the ball out of his hole and 
You're saying throw the ball to, throw the ball to Major Roman. No, I'm not sure about throwing it to Major Roman because I appreciate they, they're taking it away with a double coverage. Yeah. But I, I think that down there with with, a, with five yards to go, it's too much to ask on a fullback dive. you got to throw the ball. you got weapons that can catch the ball throw it. But I'm up here in the booth for a reason. 641 remaining. Montville will have its second possession at its own 10-yard line, for, own nine-yard line, first and 10. Luke Hall under center. Handoff. Nothing there. Sotero off right tackle for no gain at all. Hit immediately by the interior of that New London line. Major Roman coming out of the pile for the Whalers. Bit of a family affair here tonight for Casey O'Neill. Uh, everybody's here. Junior Voice is back Junior after Boyce a week off. Took a week off. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Voice. Mrs. Voice is here. You guys had practiced last night. You guys are in full family swing oh, yeah. for the holidays. Here. Yeah, got the, uh, the the Delusia family. There's my my, yeah. my my nephew with the mohawk down, the blonde mohawk down sure, there. Sure, okay. It's everyone here. We got a whole family affair. Uh-huh. Second down and 12. It was a loss of two on first down. Hall, handoff again off of right tackle. This time there's a little bit more there for Satiro, but not enough. Five-yard gain. It's a nice hustle, a nice uh, tough run by Joe Satiro, but not a lot there. Four carries for 14 yards so far early going in the game. You know, and down in distance is going to be real important for this uh, Monville offense, Casey. You know, Third and five is okay, but I, I think they want to be in a third and two, third and three situation. They don't want to put too much pressure on the quarterback to make plays. They want to rely on the offensive line to run the football a little bit. This is a big first down. This is a big third down early in the ballgame for Waffle. Yeah, third and five. Sotero will be the lone, uh, will be the, the eye back. Luke Hall, the sophomore quarterback. Twins left for the Indians. Going to throw is Hall. Now he's going to keep it himself, cuts it back inside, and he's going to fall he's down close. right at the 20-yard line, I think, with a good spot. He will have a first down. Luke Hall that time on what I believe was a design keeper. If he didn't have Bradley Johnson wide open right off the bat, which he didn't, he kept that one himself, and he gets the, the chains moving, wind that clock. Yeah, good job that time by Hall tucking the ball and running and, and knowing where the first down marker was, he stuck his head down and got the last yard and a half all on his own. Big first down early going for uh, Monfo with uh, just under five minutes left to go here in the first quarter. 6 nothing Whalers on their first possession. 49-yard touchdown by Jacob Commander. They were stopped on four downs the next time. Hall hands off to Sotero. Trying to get to the corner. Breaks a tackle. Bounces outside. And he's run out of bounds. We'll have a flag on the play. Possibly a late hit out of bounds that time. When that is the kind of penalty that New London uh, really needs to get out of their repertoire. They're too good a football team to be giving extra yards like that. Yeah, number 57 that time on the penalty. That's uh, Reynoldson Michael. Did I put inside for that one? Yeah. Reynolds and Michael. A little extracurricular activities out of bounds there. A good run, seven yards on the carry, and then you're going to put on about 15 for the penalty. So about a 22-yard gain yeah, on when, first down. And when you got a team starting their, in, on their own 10-yard line, the last thing you want to do is give them 15 yards. Here's a team that hasn't really had a, a string of all, you know positive plays. They haven't put together more than one or two plays in a row of any success. You can't give them 15 yards. Oh, Mopo's going to do a nice job here of, it's a holding penalty. Holding on. I saw the flag come out in front of me. It looked like it was a late hit. I'm a little confused here. As, I, as am I. We're going to say here, personal. dead ball personal foul against New London. We saw that. Right. But in addition, now that they're marking it off from the spot. Okay, so you had a, you had a holding penalty out on the outside of the run. Right. And then, an, and then the young sportsman, like, after the, after the play so was over. First and five. Uh, after looks, all the yeah, yards. Looks like that's exactly right. It'll be first and five, ball at the 25-yard line. Call it the 20, yeah, 24 yard line. So first and five after the short, somewhat offset. Yeah, short five, uh, call it a long four. Perfect. All right. Sitaro is the setback handoff instead on the fullback dive. Not a lot there for for Montville. Uh, They tried to hit a little quick punch shot up the middle with number 33. Zach Navarrete, the sophomore, and I gotta think that, that was trying to just get try to catch New London yeah. over over committing to the pitch. And again, number fifty-seven, we called his name on the penalty. Reynolds and Michael is gonna be very active in the middle of that defense for this uh, Whaler team. Bradley Johnson goes outside along with Greg Clark. Second down and a short one. Handoff goes to Satira, and he is buried by Nashawn Pemberton that time. After no gain, Pemberton shot in and drilled them in the backyard. Fumble on the play as well. And looks, I see Whalers running on. Yeah, the field, like but I see no signal from the official. They're saying New London football. Yeah, Pemberton, one of those healthy Whalers after a bye week, making plays. 
Fill in the middle of the defense. That was one of the strangest fumbles I've ever seen. There was, there was no urgency yeah. on like either time, either side on the field. I, I don't think they knew the ball was loose. No, I thought Pemberton dropped him for in the, in the hole, and that was it. Well, here is the third Whaler possession, and they've gotten better field position every time. Now they have the ball at Montville's 37-yard line. Excuse me, call it the 30-yard line. In motion, Roman. Gomez, hands on an end around, a big major Roman. Roman hurdles somebody on the outside for a gain of four. Now that's a play a you don't see sweep. all the time. A jet sweep with major Roman. Again, tackle well, no turnovers, penalty free football. Keys to win for Montville tonight. Roman tried to do a little Olympic hurdles out there on the outside. He got stopped for maybe a yard. Second and ten in Montville after that early 49-yard gain and then the uh, Efren Santiago run. Uh, has settled in a little bit yeah, here little on bit. defense. Yeah, a little bit. Second and 10, ball at the 28-yard line of Montville. Commander is the lone setback. Now we got trips left for the Whalers. In motion, Roman. Gomez. Hands off the, up to middle to Commander, and nothing there. Steven Bollinger, the senior linebacker for Montville, in on the tackle. Again, that's a bit of an option look, I think. Almost a dive option look, pull it out and throw the ball, you know, for Gomez there and force feeding the ball, Jacob Commander, into the line. It's going to be third and long for New London, third and call it nine and a half. Very close to the vest thus far for this New London offense in this game. Have not yet seen a, a ball downfield to Monty Johnson, Gio Lopez, or the major Roman. Lopez, Gio Lopez, Santiago, and Roman split wide left. Commander's the lone set. Now Roman goes in motion again. And we're going to get a flag on the play. A delay. It's going to be a delay of game against the Whalers. That'll back them up five more yards. How do you get a delay of game running the exact same formation, the exact same play as what you ran on second down? Yeah, I'm not sure. And that's one of the things that Coach Roman was on the kids on the field. I mean, we got a game tonight. No walking. Let's have a sense of urgency. I'm sure that Juan Roman's not happy with that one on the sideline. Yeah, got to tighten it up out there for the Whalers right now. Early success. Though the Indians, to their credit, have rebounded and are tightening up. In motion, Roman. Gomez under center. Commander's the lone setback. Gomez going to throw. Gomez, plenty of time. Throws down the sideline, and it is caught out there by Elijah Parker. Parker short of a first down, but close enough to make it a very short fourth down. Nice pitch and catch that time from Gomez to Parker. Parker went up and got it, came down, and tried to turn it upfield. Again, nice read that time by Gomez. He was looking his, uh, looking away the whole time. And nice, like I said, nice pitch and catch that time, Casey. He makes it a manageable fourth down and two for the Whalers. Yeah, I think it's even a short two at that, Sports Doctor. So with uh, 135 remaining here in the first period, New London faces its second fourth down of the game. They were stopped on their first fourth down. Same formation now. Com Commander's the lone set. Quarterback keeper by Melquan Gomez, and unless something happens, he is not going to get it. The pile gets pushed forward. It's going to all be a the spot, but I think he's short. Nice job that time by the interior defensive line by the Indians, toughening up and making it stand. That's the second time that New London has gone for it on fourth down early in this ball game, and it looks like it could be the second time that they've been stopped short. Yep, they're going to look at the line right now, but I don't think he got it. I think the Indians held. Let's see. That initial contact, I mean, uh, Montville stood him up at the, at, behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to bring the chains out, but I think it's a formality at this point. I think Gomez is a good half yard short of the first down. See what the chains have in store. They'll put it down and pull the chain out, and he's Montville short. says he's short. He's short. 0 for 2 on fourth down for the New London Whalers. A nice stand that time. By the Montville defense case. And give them credit. Montville, New London has had the ball in better field position each, yeah. of, each of its three possessions, all in Montville territory and only six points. Yeah, and outside of that first run by Jacob Commander, you've seen this Montville defense toughen up to an extent as the ball got closer into the red zone. All right, let's see what Luke Hall can do for the Indians. Sotero is the setback. Navarrete is his fullback. Johnson and Clark are the wideouts. Hand off, off of left tackle. Not much there for Sotero. They're going to be second and long. Very important for Montville on the offensive end to win the battle of the line of scrimmage. Push Montville's defensive line a little bit. Create some easy running lanes for the tailback so they don't have to go in and scratch and claw for every yard they get. Yeah, the New London defense has really not allowed much of anything no. uh, in the running game thus far. Um, 
Montville keeps trying to hit it up the middle. They've already given up on anything outside of the tackles. Second and long. Bradley Johnson goes wide right. Greg Clark in the slot. Hall. Hands off again. It's Sotero. Ball's loose. It's on the turf. And Sotero covers his own fumble. There were four whalers all around it. Sotero was lucky to fall on it, but he did loss on the play, and it's going to bring up third and 15. Yeah, big hit that time by the New Orleans defense, and again, ball on the turf could have been disastrous that time for Montville. Again, down in distance, going to bring up a third and 15 here for the Indians. The little things, Casey, these little things in, in a high school football game, you know, turnovers, penalties, uh, field position, everything right now going in the favor of the Whalers. Down under five seconds. We'll see if Montville gets a playoff before the end of the first period. Doesn't look like it. That is the end of the first period. And your score here at Montville High School, the New London Whalers 6 and the Montville High School Indians nothing. Out of town scoreboard. Looking at the major leagues right now. Toronto beat Texas 5-3 to three earlier. Toronto now up 2 nothing in that American League series. Uh, the Washington Nationals. Trailed 4 nothing, but they've scored two runs off of Clayton Kershaw. And at the end of three, it's 4-2 Los Angeles. And the Cleveland Indians shutting out the Red Sox. 5 nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning in Cleveland. And that would put the Red Sox in another 2-0 hole. They seem to like to get down. Yeah, David Price stinks. I mean, stop it. I, I'm, I'll go into him at halftime. Uh, 101 total yards of offense in the first quarter for the London Whalers to just 33 for Montville. And obviously 49 of those 101 Coming on the first play from scrimmage by Jacob Commander, so... Add Efren Santiago is yeah, yeah, there as well. Yep, yeah. I mean, Montville's played better on defense. They're hurting themselves right now. Turnovers, penalties. They're playing tough football, but it's really, really hard for a team like that to overcome uh, their own mistakes. Uh, you're, you said David Price stinks. Three in the third inning, five earned runs, two off three. Ah, three he's down. terrible. That's, I mean, he's uh, awful. That's, that's a big-time performance by your ace on the road in a game where they need you. I mean, stop. Well, the Cy Young Award winner didn't pitch great last well, night. Well, listen, he, I mean, he, he got tattooed last night. What do you go, three home runs? Three home runs in the inning. Three home runs last night. Yeah, three home runs. Back-to-back? Back. Two of them. Yeah. That's why they call them back-to-back. Back. That's right. And belly-to-belly. Belly. <laughs> all right. Third down and a long 15 for Montville. Going left to right in the all black. Hall is your sophomore quarterback. He's got Austin Glidden as the tailback in the backfield. Twins right, including the very dangerous... Bradley Johnson wide right here on third and 15 for Montville. Bradley Johnson will be matched up against New London's Monty Johnson, a ball-hawking cornerback already with multiple interceptions on the year, including yeah, he's a good ball some player. returns. He's a very dangerous man out there. Hall takes the handoff, rolls. He's looking down the field for Johnson. Johnson, the other Johnson, turns around, and it is incomplete. And a flag on the play. And a flag on the play, and I think that's going to be offensive because yep. Monty Johnson of New London had great position against Bradley Johnson. I think Bradley Johnson needed to hit him, but it looks like they're clapping. Montville's clapping. If this is a Wow, game, that's that. That's like it's Mon that Monty Johnson did everything right on it. He turned around and looked for the ball, positioned himself you can't, inside the numbers case. No, it is against Bradley Johnson. Okay, right. there you go. Yeah, because you can't play quarterback better than Monty Johnson did on that play. He had position. He turned his head. He ran with him. The ball was underthrown. He had the interception. Yeah, he saw the ball the whole way, turned his body inside to the numbers, and that was a pick. Yeah, and Bradley Johnson did his job, which is pass interfere so as sure. to not allow the interception. I think New London declined the penalty. Yeah. They did. So that will bring up fourth down, and Montville will be punting out of its own end zone. And now Monty Johnson will go back with Elijah Parker to return the punt. Yeah, with three possessions so far for New London in this game, and all three of them have come on the Montville side of the field. And this next one will as well. Yeah. They will have four possessions on that side of the field. Greg Clark standing on his own goal line to punt it away for Montville. Parker and Johnson stand at their own 40. Snap is good. Kick is a low line drive coming down to Johnson. And Johnson receives it at the 40. He's going to try to head it all the way across the field. He cuts it back inside. Jukes a man. Gets to the outside. Now he's got the punter to beat. And wrestled out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Give kicker Greg Clark credit because Monty Johnson was slippery. Yeah, that time you saw the athletic ability of Monty Johnson and Johnson in the open field and you know, that's where Coach Roman wants him. He wants him in space. He, he wants him to uh, show off his speed and moves. Great field position here. And there's another flag down. Another flag on the play. We'll see 
what this one is, but New London's first possession was at Montville's 49. Yeah. They got closer on their second possession, closer on their third possession, and depending on this penalty, it's going to be somewhere in Montville territory. Let's see what the penalty is. The penalty is going to be, well, our officials aren't sure yet. We're going to have, oh. Oh, yeah, have flags, yeah, on flags the everywhere, yeah. Coach Tanner Grove was looking yeah. to catch that flag like a, like a punt. He's talking to one of his assistants. Things are pretty heated over there on the sidelines right now for Montville. Coach Tanner Grove trying to restore a little bit of order. Need to get back, Coach, over there. Yeah, Coach Grove is talking to one of his assistants. That flag was not against Coach Grove. That flag was definitely on one of the assistants. Chirping little, going on yeah, down there. A little, little emotional down little there on the sidelines. But after all of these unsportsmanlike penalties, New London might have the ball, you know, on the other side of the end zone. <laughs> and again, we'll go back to the opening of the game. You know what? No penalties. No penalties, no penalties. You know, outside of their first two runs, Montville has tackled well. Yes. But the second two were no turnovers, which they have, yeah, turnovers, have turned it over. And no penalties. And they, my gosh. Flag, oh my flags are flying here at Montville High School. Five penalties for 50 yards yeah, in more, the first quarter. More flags in the 4th of July so far. See what I did Like there? fireworks. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we're going to have multiple. I think you're on, your, you're on your game tonight. Multiple unsportsmanlike penalties against the Montville Indians. No. So let me ask you a question. Do they march it off half the distance to the goal and then half the distance to the goal then half the distance to the goal? So they could actually have the ball at, say, the half-yard line? Uh, half, 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 and half? Well, I think what's on, if you're in New London, though, there's going to be half and half in your it's, 40, it's 45 yards of penalties that's going to end up being like eight yards of penalties because <laughs> yeah. they're already all the way down. In the books, yes, yeah. in the books. So they're marching. They're inside the 10 now. So New London is going to have this first and goal yeah. at the five-yard line. Half, so, half, 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 half. So four, four <laughs> possessions. Yes. All in Montville territory, and now they're at the five. You yeah. can't, you can't get better field position than the five yard line. With half and half of my coffee. You're a half and half guy. I am half and half. I'm almond. I, you, that strikes me as I, I would, you, I would think of you as a straight cream guy. No, yeah, half and half. No, you're straight cream. Like light not, and sweet. No, well, that's just like you, light and sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big guy, but I'm very sensitive. You are. Look, yeah, I mean, you're one of those seasonal coffee guys, pumpkin spice. You like uh, that kind of stuff? No. Salt and caramel? Uh, you know what? Listen, once in a while, once in a great while, I will. But I, I stick to my, my regular coffee. All right. Okay. 11.33 remaining here. Whalers with a first and goal at the Montville five-yard line after a great punt return by Monty Johnson and multiple unsportsmanlike penalties against the Montville Indians. So the Whalers are in fantastic position to score on their fourth possession of the ball game. So we'll see what the Whalers do on first down. They send... Twins left, Major Roman split right, handoff goes to Efren Santiago, and a great job hit in the backfield, Steve Bollinger. We've called his name a few times. He shot the gap from linebacker and hit Santiago in the backfield. Sellout run blitz that time by Steve Bollinger. Made the contact and wrapped up Commander in the backfield. Good stop that time by the Montville uh, junior, senior, I'm sorry, Steve Bollinger. So that's going to be uh, a second and goal ball now at the eight-yard line. So a loss of three on the play that time. Gio Lopez. You know, London outside line. of that first big run, Casey, hasn't been able to cash in yet on this all this good field position. Commander and Santiago are the backs. Gomez to throw. Looking out in the flat, it goes. Caught out there by Loyer, and he falls down back at the five-yard line. So... I think he had Gio Lopez on the slant that time, but he elected to go in the flat to Loyer. Going to get some yardage back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to bring up third and goal from the five. Three for three for just 19 yards for Melquan Gomez. And again, countless trips into the red zone uh, thus far. I think that this is the third trip into the red zone. They've come up empty on their first two trips. Their only touchdown was off that big 49-yard run. So very important here for this London Whale and offense to try and punch us in. They're going to send Efren Santiago wide right, Lopez and Loyer to the left. Commander's the set. Pitch right to Commander. Commander trying to get to the outside. Use the speed. Cuts it back inside. Touchdown, Whalers. Jacob Commander. Uh, Jacob Commander is in command. He's a ball player, isn't he? He's got that low center of gravity. Nice cutback lane. Runs low. Keeps that ball tucked into his uh, right into his body, into his chest. I like this kid. It's a good, good sophomore tailback. 10:01 here in the first half. The Whalers on top, 12 to nothing. <laughs> Xavier Alvarez will come in for the extra point out of the hold of Owen George, the freshman quarterback, who we'll, we'll see lots of in the years to come. This kick is up, and it is good. 
So with 10:01 remaining here in the first half, the Whalers jump on top, 13 to nothing over the Indians. Four, a run by Jacob Commander. Four carries for 56 yards and two touchdowns for the New London talented, very talented sophomore Casey. Extremely important for New London to take care of all of you know that field position they had. I mean, Monville kind of shot themselves in the foot, all the penalties, but. Again, their third straight trip in the red zone, they finally cash in for six. Yeah, and not to look ahead, you know, for New London past this year, but, you know, they, you know, you lose a senior quarterback in Mel Quan Gomez. They love freshman Owen George and yes. what he'll bring to the offense. Yeah. Commander's only a sophomore. Uh, Elijah Parker and Gio Lopez and Monty Johnson are all juniors. Yeah, they're, they're next, talented. Next they're year, good. they're going to have all kinds of offensive talent again next year. The win, and with Juan Roman at the helm, I think you're about to see another golden age of football at New London High School. Matching the helmets, the gold ah, ah. for the New London I don't see Whalers. your gold on, though, tonight. I, you, you, you chose not to wear your garb tonight. I'm impartial, man. I'm, no, I'm, I'm mean, an impartial listen. broadcaster. I got to broadcast a football game here. At game day, at the basketball games, you're wearing your garb underneath your shirt and tie. Uh, that, that, I might have some green on somewhere tonight. <laughs> From his own 40. Long kick by Alvarez, taken by Clark. Clark brings it up the right side, and he's dragged down after... He reaches the 30-yard line by Billy Clark of the Whalers, and that will be where Montville sets up shop. First and 10 from their own 39-54 remaining here in the half. Yeah, down 14, nothing right now. And, you know, Montville's going to clean up, uh, clean up the dirty laundry on the field, and then you know try and get some positive stuff going in their way. I mean, it's very hard for this team to uh, to do anything offensively when there's penalties and turnovers and. You know, danger zone time here for the Montville Indians. Yeah, and it's very tough to come back against a team like New London because of the athletes. They'll pin their ears back and rush the passer. A lot of guys that get with great hands in the you know, secondary. Very, Plus, very doubt, tough team. Doubt starts here. creeping into the back of your mind, too, as a high school football player. Okay, so Hall's going to go from the shotgun. First time we've seen this. Hall from the shotgun. Looks like he wants to throw. Hands off instead to Sotero, and he is buried. Sotero does not get back to the line of scrimmage as New London was not fooled by that formation or that play, and he's going to lose five, second and, and 15. Yeah, New London's going to stack eight guys in the box right now and challenge uh, young quarterback Luke Hall to throw the ball a little bit. We're not going to give you anything on the ground, New London's going to say, and uh, we're going to make you do it through the air. No, Michael and Fisher Exum that time from, the, from their line and linebacker spots. And I'll tell you what, not only are they quick, New London's got a lot of size. Big. They, they, big kids, not not huge on the line, but all the football, way across. Yeah, football-looking kids, too. Yeah, kids, thick thick kids out there. Hall from the shotgun, Satiro to his left, twin receivers. Hand off to Satiro, and he is buried again before he gets to the offensive line. Hit hard on the play. Coming up from his linebacker spot was Keon Wilbur, and Keon Wilbur that time... Makes it third and 15 for Montville. They have found no running room at all with Joe Sotero. Yeah, and nine carries for five yards for Sotero up front for the Montville Indians. Execution and toughness. The battle cry last night for Coach Juan Roman and his entire staff, Casey. And there's a lot of guys over there they have, on his staff. Yeah, they have to get to find a way to get the ball into the hands of uh, Bradley Johnson. He is too good for them not to. Deep down the sideline, looking for Johnson, and he throws it behind him, and I think he had a step that time. Uh, that was a broken play that time, but Johnson, yeah. missed, an missed, Montville missed an opportunity. Bradley Johnson had a step. I think Monty, they were in, New London was in zone. Monty Johnson let him go into the secondary. Yeah, Bradley Johnson was running down the numbers, and Luke Hall was looking towards the sidelines. A little miscommunication that time by receiver and quarterback, and that play was there. Bradley Johnson had a step or two, like you said, behind in the one in secondary. Yeah, it looked like uh, Monty Johnson, the Whaler cornerback, turned. Let him go. He turned him, him loose. Let him go. Let him go to the secondary. Yeah. And if that and that might be why Hall put the ball down the sideline. Right. Uh, which would have been a, would have been a successful place to throw the ball, but Hall, but the uh, but Bradley Johnson went inside. He was on the numbers. That's right. So as it stands, it's going to be fourth down. Montville will punt again. So Elijah Parker and Monty Johnson stand at midfield for New London. Looks like New London will have its fifth consecutive possession in Montville territory. No possessions in their own territory in the first half. A confusion down on the field right now. Yeah, time, out. time out by Tanner Grove. Stat Guru 2.0 is next to me. He's got his Toronto Blue Jays garb on tonight. I got to tell you, I like. I, I, I was very concerned that the Blue Jays, if they made the playoffs, would get hot. They have, I, I think they have the kind of team that is very dangerous. They've got, you know, a, a very potent middle of the lineup. They've got 
Uh, their starting pitching is not great, but they've got two, you know, very Aaron Sanchez and Jay Happ have both had fantastic years yeah. pitching well. They've got a lot of arms in the bullpen. I, I was concerned that it just and having to nav the grind that a that a Donaldson. Encarnacion, Batista, Tulowitzki, that kind of middle of the line, that grinds uh, opposing pitchers. I was worried about them a little bit. Uh, I did think they would struggle uh, a little bit in Texas, but they have just butchered Cole Hamels and Hugh Darvish. Yeah, Hugh Darvish was very pedestrian today, if I could use that term. You can. You did. Yeah, he's very, he's just very blah. You. It's a good lineup there, Toronto. You. Toronto's going home with a 2-0 lead. Yeah, I think Toronto's going to move on. I think Toronto-Cleveland is looking like the... And it's all about Rajay Davis and Terry Francona oh, at that boy. point. Got to root for Rajay. Got to root for the Whaler. All right, Monty Johnson now may call that. Elijah Parker stands at his own 45-yard line. Punt is up. It's a low spiraling kick, and it comes down to Parker at the 50. Parker crosses the 40, dragged down at the 35-yard line. Nice tough run by Elijah Parker. He's a big, big kid. And I'll tell you, Elijah Parker to the 40-yard line, five straight possessions for the Whalers in Montville territory. Yeah, Parker, boy, he's tough. They got a couple kids, I think, in the open field. You know, Parker, Monty Johnson. We had him. We saw Major Roman on a on a, on a jet sweep with it. I mean, there's a lot of weapons out there right now for the uh, for the Whalers. Yeah, a lot of talent out there right now. Montville down 13 to nothing. Uh, trying just to hold on right here, not let this thing slip away. Remember, Montville will get the ball to start the second half. So they're just trying to keep this thing within reason right now. They do not want to give up a third score. Loyer and Clark, wide right for the Whalers. Commander, the lone setback. Melquan Gomez, under center. Straight drop, Gomez looking to throw, going to keep it himself. Tucks it up and crosses the 30-yard line. And we'll get to the 29-yard line. Nice run on first down by Melquan Gomez. Who was looking for Gio Lopez, didn't have him, tucked it, and ran himself. He's got a two-man pass pattern that time, Casey. Gio Lopez down the sidelines, and Major Roman right down the seam in the middle of the field wasn't there. Lopez, nice job, tuck and run. Smart quarterback, senior quarterback, and can make plays with his feet as well. Second and five as the junior voice of game day comes on into the booth to say hello. Keep junior an eye on Roman, Major Roman running down the middle of the seam in the field. Same formation for the Whalers on second and five. Commanders the lone set. Gomez to throw. Gomez in the flat to Roman. Bobbled and dropped out there. Ball was thrown a little bit behind him, but he was trying to run before he had the football incomplete. That'll bring up third and five. I like to throw the ball a lot to the flat as the Whalers. We haven't seen anything downfield yet. Everything's been to the outside. Just outside the numbers. I think the middle of the field would be wide open right now if, if uh, Lopez looked that way. Third and five for the Whalers. Ball sits at the 30-yard line. A lot of underneath passing right now. Yeah, I, underneath. I'm still waiting for him to take a shot in the middle of the field, like yeah. you said. There's the Coning family down. We're walking into the ball game. All right. Third and five. Well, you know everybody here. I do. Handoff commander. Commander has a first down, breaks it to the outside, and the Whalers will have a first down on the inside the 20-yard line of Montville. Straight dive play that time by Jake Commander. Again, he, he remains to be the most productive New London ball player tonight. It's his with six carry. Five carries for 69 yards for Jacob Commander and two touchdowns here in the first half. Seven minutes and seven seconds and counting. It'll be under seven minutes when the Whalers take this first down snap. Ball at the 17-yard line. Loyer goes wide right. Or Major Roman out there with him. Gio Lopez and Billy Clark wide left. Four receivers for the Whalers. Commander's the lone running back. Gomez, straight drop, looking to throw. Throws it deep in the corner, over the shoulder of Loyer, incomplete at the goal line. Nice throw that time, just a little bit behind the shoulder of Loyer. Hey, first time Gomez has looked downfield uh, in the passing game. Throw just out of Loyer's reach. Be second and ten, 645. I like, right? I like the aggressive play calling, though. I like the fact that they're going to take some shots here. Yeah, they had all kinds of... Uh, success, you know, throwing the ball in the flats, but not a lot of yardage. I like that they're starting to move I, it down I a little think bit. the mismatches are there. You got Roman, you know, line up now in, in, in the slot. Uh, there's some mismatches out there. Gomez, his responsibility is to find them. This time, Gomez hands the commander on the dive, and commander is buried. Steve Bollinger, we have called his name a lot. Steve Bollinger is the one Montville Indian, I could say right now, is playing above and beyond expectations. His eighth tackle already here in the first half, Casey O'Neill. Senior 
linebacker doing work, shooting the gap. King on that dive play with Commander. Nice job wrapping up, making the tackle. Bollinger. What I like about the Whalers is they run the same formation two, three times in a row. They try to get a little rhythm out of something. So even if something works, doesn't work, they come back to that same formation. They're not about all kinds no. of tricky formations. No, right? there's no fool. And no fool. And the same personnel on the field, too. Same they may personnel. sub a wide receiver in here and there, but this is what we got. Yep, four wide, twins on each side. Commander's the setback. We're going to get another delay of game penalty against New London. And that is on third down and ten. Uh, you know, absolutely in for, uh, unforgivable. That's a second delay of game penalty that the Whalers have incurred this far. The laziness getting back to the line of scrimmage and, you know, getting the play going again. They're not switching personnel. They're not doing wholesale changes, you know, for the skill people. Again, same people, same personnel. Got to pick up the pace a little bit here if you're the Whalers. Third and 15, 5.52 remaining here in the first half. 13 to nothing, New London. Lopez and Clark are the twins right. Commander's the lone set. Gomez looking to throw. Now he's going to step up, and not much there. Tackled almost immediately. Nick Angel on the play. And that's going to bring up fourth down for New London. But where they are, it's going to have to go for it, right? Fourth down, you're on the 18-yard line. You're not going to try to kick a field goal. I think this is uh, fourth and go. you got to tell Gomez to hang in there in the pocket, keep his happy feet solid. And, and take a shot, Chuck, when you got big number 80 out there. Feed the big fella. It's going to be fourth and 14. Ball is going to be marked at the 21-yard line. So, Whalers with their longest fourth down of the night. Clark and Lopez go wide left. Loyer wide right. Commanders the lone set. Gomez to throw. He's pressured. Steps up, rolled. Tries to throw while pressured, and it's incomplete. Pressure was put on by Dasani Vanette and... The aforementioned Nick Angel, and it's going to be another turnover on downs. The Whalers have been very unsuccessful on fourth down. The third time they went for it tonight, and the third time they didn't make it. Obviously, the first two were a little shorter, but, you know, again, five trips, five possessions, all five possessions in Montville territory, and they have two touchdowns to show for it. Coach Roman right now probably a little bit displeased with his team's execution here in the first half. Yeah, and Coach Tanner Grove, you know, has laid, you know, put his hat on the uh, the defense, and I have to say, two out of five, 40% right now. Yeah, they with played well. A play, you know, playing uphill against these Whalers with his field position. They have not had field position all day long. They, they, this Montville offense has been running uphill. Austin Glidden is the tailback. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Glidden, and he'll gain maybe a yard, but the Whaler interior line has been very stingy tonight. Only a yard. We've seen a lot of Satiro, now Austin Glidden, but neither has been able to find much in the way of running room. Yeah, senior Austin Glidden, junior Nick Tibbetts, uh, yeah, converted tight end. You'll see him in the backfield a little bit. Tough running up front. Defensive grunt and a defensive linebacking core from the Whalers, Casey. Extremely active. The second down and seven. 425 remaining here in the first half. New London on top 13 to nothing. You're at Montville High School. We're listening to Game Day on the day.com. Greg Clark now moved into the slot. Luke Hall. Hall hands off to Glidden, and Glidden is hit behind the line of scrimmage and stopped for no gain. Maybe a loss of one on the play. The New London High School linebacking core, that time it was Fisher Exum. Really nothing there for Montville. Tough sledding up front. And again, the down and distance, third and seven, third and eight, you know, third and ten, third and twelve. These are positions that Tanner Grove wanted to keep Luke Hall, sophomore quarterback, out of. Hall's now facing a long third down and eight. He'll have Glidden as his tailback, Satiro as his fullback. Twins left. Hall. Hands off straight up the middle to Satiro, his fullback, and nothing there. Hit immediately by the interior of the New London line. Roman coming out of the pack along with multiple Whaler linemen. They're all flying to the ball, and it will be fourth down again. And barring a really good punt, New London might be six for six on field position in the first half. Yeah, only 32 yards of offense thus far compared to 130 for New London for this Montville Indian team. They've had a hard time moving to football against that New London defense thus far. Parker and Johnson stand at midfield for New London. Clark, end over end punt, taken right at midfield by Parker, looking for a block. He gets it, tries to get to the outside, and he does. Parker's at the oh. 40, Parker's at the 30, flag on the play. Parker's down to the 20-yard line, and we're going to have one of those penalties is going to be against New London. There's four flags on the field. 
There was a big block on the other side of the field by number 80, the Major Roman. It looks like it's going to be a block in the back. I didn't see it. I saw I saw a clean, clean block. It's not that what they're calling is you're no longer allowed to block a defenseless person. Okay, so, well, then that's that's the case then. And it's exactly on punt plays like this that the All rule right. was put into play. You can't lay in wait for somebody, and when they turn oh, around, he laid him out. throw him. He, he laid him out. Can't do that anymore. You're not allowed to make contact on what used to be like. Same thing from the line of scrimmage, crack back blocks, things like that. Not allowed it anymore. So that penalty, ironically, it's going to be a whaler penalty that makes them start their possession in their own territory. They would have been 6-for-6 six six starting in Montville territory here in the first half, but with that penalty, they will start in whaler territory yeah. for the first time. Yeah, and again, how about the flash of uh, uh, athleticism by the junior Elijah Parker? He's a lot of fun to watch when he gets to football. Yeah, he and Monty Johnson have been a treat so far on punt returns. New London will have the ball at their own 38-yard line, which is far and away the worst field position they've had tonight because their previous five possessions were all in Montville territory. With 2.44 remaining in the half, let's see what senior Melquan Gomez can orchestrate for the Whalers. Big possession here for this Montville defense, Casey. Better off going to the locker room down 13 nothing and 20. And they get the ball to start the second half. So big swing right now if they can hold. Gomez has an eye formation. He's got Gio Lopez wide left. And his commander is his fullback and Efren Santiago, the tailback. That is the possession, excuse me, the formation that we saw to start the ball game. Gomez ready to run the play now. Power eye. remaining. It is, in fact, a very powerful eye. <laughs> Gomez stands up, barks an audible at the line. Receivers are checking their wristbands for what route they're going to run now. Gomez, straight drop, pressured. Throws deep down the sideline into double coverage, and it's caught by Roman at the 35-yard line into double coverage. Yeah. Nothing you can do. Glidden was there. Bradley Johnson was there, and Roman just went up and took it away. Yeah, why not? He's six foot five. Throw it up and let him go get it. He's six nice. five, and with the arms, he's eight five. Yeah, he's great. got long arms, lanky kid, yeah. athletic. You know, that looks like them, you know, the jump ball that you were talking about earlier. A big play from Gomez to Roman. Now the Whalers are in business at the Montville 35-yard line. Nice pitch and catch that time. Same formation this time. Gomez fumbles the snap, falls on it. Looks like he fell on his own fumble. And if he did, it'll remain Whaler for football. And it does. Ball at the 35-yard line of Montville. Clock ticking, 2.15. Those are little kind of mistakes here that can kill a drive. And let's see if uh, New Orleans can recover from it. But again, the first time all night. We've seen him open up the offense a little bit and throw the ball downfield, and why not go to six foot five D Major Roman? I was thinking, no, no, no. Nice play. You know, yeah, like, I mean, he had coverage. He had, he had safety help behind him. He had cornerback in front of him, double covered. No problem. Looks like New London's going to take out. a timeout. Melquan Gomez was not liking what he saw down on the field. So, with 148 remaining in the first half, New London on top, 13 to nothing. We will have a timeout. On the field, the sports doctor will stay here at halftime. Give you a little halftime something something with uh, Stat Guru. I mean, you need to come in a little earlier because I do not see Mike tomorrow. Is Mike here tonight? Uh, I have Mike in the house. I have not seen Mike tomorrow in the house, but you and the Stat Guru can fill a few minutes. Uh, The Dodgers hold on to a slim four to three lead now in the middle of the fifth inning against Washington. The Red Sox down 6 nothing through 7. Yeah, I don't, please do not give me that score the rest of the night. Looks like Corey Kluber throwing a gem. Kluber still in the game. Seven innings, three hits, seven strikeouts for the Indians' ace. The Red Sox look like they'll be heading back to Fenway down 2 nothing in what could be Big Poppy's final game as a Boston Red Sox. Phil Lorby in here. You should really not worry about halftime right now. No. You should worry about talking to me about uh, Big Poppy's possible final game. <laughs> you said Peter Wappy's going to that. Peter Wappy is going yeah, to that. Great game. Peter Wappy. We, uh, how did I how did I get his name wrong? The great Peter. Wappy. And we'll blame we'll blame him if the Red Sox don't win that game. One forty eight remaining here in the first half. Wheelers on top, thirteen nothing, facing a second and eleven from the Montville thirty six yard line. Gomez straight drop. Looking to throw deep down the sideline, looking for Gio Lopez, and he's got him with a leaping catch inside the 10 yard line. Gio Lopez with a great athletic catch of a beautifully thrown ball from Melquan Gomez. There you see the arm of senior quarterback Melquan Gomez, Gio Lopez laying out for Casey. Two big pass plays here as we creep closer to halftime. Have New London once again knocking on the door of the goal line. Inside the 10, first and goal, New London from the 8-yard line, 136 remaining. They already have a 13-0 lead. Trips left, 
and Commander as the lone setback now as Melquan Gomez heads under center. Major Roman goes in motion to the right. Gomez, straight drop, looking to throw, pressured, and he's hit hard and brought to the ground by number 51, Jack Ware, the all-everything linebacker of Montville, and that yeah. prevented Gomez from stepping into that throw. Yeah, fastball that time by uh, Melquan Gomez looking for Elijah Parker coming off the line of scrimmage that time, a little too hot for Parker to handle. Well, that one hurt. Uh, Jack Ware got the helmet right into the chest of Melquan Gomez, and Later on in the second half, we're going to talk a little bit more about Jack Ware and his ability to call the signals as a senior linebacker for Tanner Grove's team and what that has okay. meant for the Montville High School defense. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Gio Lopez, Roman, and Parker are wide to the left. Now Roman goes in motion. Gomez, straight drop, pressured, and he's going to be sacked back at the 10-yard line. Montville sending pressure, and they got to Gomez. Bollinger was in there as well as Brandon Rico, and the pressure got to Gomez, and it's going to bring up third and goal from the nine-yard line, and we'll be under a minute to go when he gets the snap off. Yeah, and credit that secondary that time by the Montville Indians. They double-covered Major Roman coming off the line, and that was Gomez's primary target. He had no time to check down and look to his second or third option. Trips left for New London on third and goal. In motion, Major Roman. Gomez under center. Gomez to throw, has some time, plenty of time, steps up, tucks it in, puts his head down, heads for the goal line, waiting for a signal, a touchdown. touchdown, Melquan Gomez and the New London High School Whalers with a little bit of a dagger, 34 seconds remaining in the half, and they score their third touchdown. Six plays, 58 yards, featuring Melquan Gomez that time, two big pass plays, and pay dirt for six with his feet. Showing that he could do it all, Casey, at the quarterback position. Very athletic, very talented senior quarterback. And you said the difference between 20 nothing and 13-0 and is, is more than just seven points. And it is right now 19 to nothing, New London. Snap good, kick is up. It is high, and it is good. And with 34 seconds remaining in the first half, the Whalers strike 20 to nothing, New London. You know, six plays, 58 yards. That was the first sustainable drive that we saw this New London offense operate that time. A couple of big pass plays, a couple of run plays. Nice job, nice drive that time. A nice call by the coaching staff for the New London Whalers. And, it, you know, they had back-to-back -back plays, back-to-back -back throws by Gomez where Montville had pressure and got to him. Yeah. That time they kept the – they kept – they readjusted their blocking scheme. Gomez had plenty of time. Not only did he have time, he had, had the ability to step up. And then he's a big kid. Yeah, he saw the field. He saw the field open up in front of him and um, he made the play. He got, to the, he got to the goal line. Well, six feet, 180 pounds, they list Melquan Gomez. Nah, he's, 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 he's a little more solid than that. He's all of that. Yeah. So, and he showed it there. And the Whalers up 20 to nothing, 34 seconds remaining. Montville will have time for one more possession. But I would be surprised if Coach Tanner Grove did anything other than try to get in the locker room right now and regroup. Alvarez. Kicks it straight down the middle of the field to Clark. Clark heads straight up the right side for Montville, and he's tackled after he gets to the 26-yard line, where it will be first down, Montville, 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Again, the big telling tale so far, Casey, in the first half is, you know, obviously the field position for New London, and then total yards gained so far in the first half. You know, Montville with just with 32 yards of total offense, and New London... 186 yards of total offense. So a big disparity. Disparity, is that a word? No, it's not. Disparity is the word you're all looking right. big for. Big disparity. That's, that's all right. That's what you're here for, sports doctor. All Keep right. things light. 27 seconds remaining here in the first half. Luke Hall under center for Montville from the eye. Hands off to Glidden, and Glidden will dive off of left tackle and hit almost immediately at his feet. He'll fall forward for a gain of two. And with about 15 seconds remaining in the first half, you may not see another play before we get to halftime. Yeah, I mean, he's played safe right now. If you Tanner Grove, like you said, get in there, regroup a little bit, and you know, Montville's got to go into halftime and say, okay, the score's zero zero. Let's uh, let's come out and let's not hurt ourselves in the second half. And there it is. There is your halftime buzzer. We are at halftime. You're listening to Game Day live on the Day.com. We're at halftime at Montville High School, where the New London High School Whalers. Have a 20 to nothing lead over the Montville High School Indians. Stay tuned as the sports doctor Keith O'Brien 
talks to you about sports, both local and national. The Stat Guru 2.0 will be in to fill it in, and we will join you on the other side for a second half action here at Montville High School. 20 to nothing, New London. Take it away, Sports Doctor. Guy, thank you very much, Casey O'Neill. It's a halftime house goal with the Sports Doctor, Keith P. O'Brien, as we are here in New London with a 20 to nothing lead over the Montville Indians. Big crowd here tonight. It's a nice Friday night for football. It's, it's brisk tonight. It's a it finally feels like fall a little bit. We've had a nice couple of days of weather. Uh, we've avoided the hurricane coming in, uh, you know, into this weekend and stuff like that. So we got a nice couple of days of weather here. And uh, lots cooking, lots going on. A busy weekend in, in sports, obviously, nationally and locally. Some big games tomorrow. Uh, you know, Staples, the big one, playing at NFA tomorrow. So lots happening. Stagger 2.0, I mean, what's what, you got your, your Blue Jays stuff on? You're ready to roll. Yep, big win. 2-0. Up 2-0 right now, heading back home, so feeling pretty confident about that moving on to the ALCS. What's more shocking right now, um, the fact that they're up 2-0 or the fact that, you know, their bats yesterday or just came alive and they were relentless? Well, I, I thought they'd take one away in um, Texas, but their pitching's been really well, and they've really been able to hit Hamels and Darvish, which was really surprising to me, but once those bats turn on, they're one of the most dangerous teams in the league. You know, is Texas one of those teams here that, you know, just doesn't know how to get things done in the postseason. You know, in the last six or seven years, you know, losing the World Series, uh, they lost the Giants a few years back. Um, you know, are they one of those teams that they're just not tough enough? With, you know, we you know again. You you like to think that Hugh Darvish, you know, has got to show up and perform, and today he didn't. Yeah, they've been there every year pretty much in the playoffs, but they've never been able to get that World Series ring that they've been after for so long. But well, I'm not sure whether it's the coaching or just whether the players aren't confident in themselves, but. They might need to change something up if it doesn't work out this year for them. I mean, they got a big time lineup. They, they did. Adrian Beltran, Carlos Beltran. They got him acquired him from the. They made a lot of trades. They made a lot of trades. Trade and you, deadline. you know, you would have liked to have thought that you know this was the year that you know Texas home field advantage, you know, best record in the American League, that they were going to actually get to the World Series or at least host uh, the ALCS. And right now, down 2-0. And unlike the Red Sox, who are down 2-0 right now, the Red Sox are coming home. Mm-hmm. Texas is going on the road. It's a lot different playing on the road than coming back home. For the Red Sox, they have a shot. It just all depends on their pitching. Clay Buckles, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Eduardo Rodriguez, so you never know. But them Texas going to Toronto and facing Aaron Sanchez and Stroman, but I'm not really seeing that happening for them, especially with their three and four pitchers. Now, you got, some, you got some family ties to the Blue Jays. Yep, I do. Um, so, I mean, you guys, I mean, are you guys fully invested there? And, you know, you, you, do you talk to Pete? Yeah, we see him. He comes home. Every time they play the Yankees or Red Sox at home, he comes back to town. During the yep. All-Star break, he's here for a couple of days. So whenever he's around local, he tries to get back home, see his family, yeah. catch up on everything. Yeah, good, good, good. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. And, then, you know, then I, it, obviously, you're a Red Sox fan. They're, they're, like, I mean, they're my second Jays favorite fan? team. Yeah. Blue Jays really a favorite Gotta team? Got to be with the family. Wow, wow. Yeah. You're, but your family, your family members playing up at Boston College tonight. Yep. BC. Big game, but. But no, no, nobody from your family went to that. None of my family, but my uncle, did, his uncle, his dad that plays at BC. So not many people are going, which I thought would. But no, family, I mean, I don't think it's a big game, though. I mean, I think Clemson's going to hammer them tonight. Right. All right, so the Red Sox last night, obviously, um, first inning, they had a chance to put two runs up on the board. Uh, uh, the play at the plate, they only get one run across. Uh, kind of changed the, changed the momentum in the field for that ball game on the challenge with the catcher. Uh, Porcello last night, Porcello was not sharp. Gave up three home runs back to back. I mean, right now the Red Sox down 0-2, coming home. Yeah, a lot of, they have a lot of young guys in their roster. They, they might have been a little nervous heading to their first playoff game in their career. So, but once they gave up those three home runs in that one inning, the tides turned. Indians had all of the energy, so it was going to be tough for them to come yeah, back. Yeah, and it looked like last night, you know, Terry Francona for Cleveland pulled out all the stops last night. Mm-hmm. He brought Andrew Miller in in, what, the fifth or sixth inning? The sixth inning, he went to his closer for five outs last night. It looked like that he just was going to take away everything, roll the dice for the staff last night, and he didn't care about tonight's game because, and obviously it, it paid off for him because they haven't got a 5 nothing lead. Yeah, I knew Kluber was going tonight, so he'd get a good performance out of him so he could use his bullpen last night. But also it's the Red Sox, who are the AL favorites to go to the World Series. So if you're going to beat them, you got to pull out all the tricks. I mean, have we seen now, I mean, have we seen enough of David Price, you know, with Toronto, uh, you know, with uh, with Detroit, uh, with the Devil Rays, with the Tampa Bay Rays, and, and, and now his start with the Red Sox today. Have we seen enough out of David Price to know that, he is probably not going to matriculate into a big-time postseason norm. 
Yeah, pay him thirty million dollars a year. Well, no, I mean outside, I don't care what they pay him. I don't, I don't care if they pay him ten cents. I don't get into salaries. But are we, are we to now to say David Price is not a big time pitcher yeah, in the postseason? When it comes to the playoffs, he hasn't performed in the past couple of years, so I think it's starting to become safe to say that he just really doesn't have the reputation as a playoff pitcher. You like him? I like him. He seems you like, like Price? Guy. Yeah. You'd want him on your staff? Tall lefty. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I try to, I try to model, model my game after him. So. He, he fits right in. And the other side, the, uh, the Dodgers are leading the Nationals right now. And tonight's game, very interesting. You've got the Cubs, best record in the major leagues, taking on the Giants. Now, I've got a, I've got a gut feeling about this series. I've got, I've got a feeling that San Francisco is going to find a way to beat Arietta in game two. And then go back and close that series out in four games. Wow, really? I, I really do. I, I mean, well, listen. It's an even year, so that's what they do. It's an even years. year. And you know what? You, when you watch the heart that Madison Bumgarner pitched the other night, I mean, you got to kill him to beat him. Yeah, he dies for those moments in those elimination games in the playoffs. He always wins. He has a good ERA. People, they couldn't touch him, but... The Giants' offense—they need to step up if they're going to want to make a little run because their pitching staff's one of the better ones in the playoffs. You've got right a now. manager there who's got what three World Series and yeah. Bochy. Um, you've got the jinx of the Cubs. You got you know Joe Madden, who's a loosey goosey guy, likes to you know do magic tricks in the locker room when he's one of those you know positive power thinking gurus. But I mean, I would give the the, the edge to Bochy. Yeah, everybody's counted. They were saying before the playoffs, Red Sox and Cubs in the World Series. Indians and Giants probably don't like that. Indians are coming out strong. Uh, looks like they're going to go up to nothing league. So the Giants, they're not going to underestimate the Cubs. And would you be shocked if the Giants beat the Cubs? I wouldn't. You would not? No. They have Cueto and Bumgarner, Jeff Samarja, and their pitching staff. So You're I'm, just a little concerned about the bats. Yeah. That's the bat. That's the problem with the Giants. They had the best record going into the All Star break, but after that, they just couldn't. Yeah, hit the they ball. stumbled. They stumbled. They fell apart. They, they had a tough August, and they less came. than five hundred, I think, after the yeah, All Star break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they rallied a little bit down the end, and yeah. um, you know they beat a very, very good um, Syndergaard the other night with the Mets, and, and that maybe that's the difference too, because you know those Mets pitchers, you know Syndergaard or whoever they may be, they're trained to go seven innings, then they go boom by the book, right to the bullpen. That's not the case for Bumgarner. That's not the case for those giant pitchers. Those guys are in there to win it, in it to win it. Yeah, Bruce Bochy knows how to win in San Francisco, so he's going to do whatever it takes for his pitchers and his offense. He's going to take all the risks he can because he just knows how to win, and he's going to. I think he's going to continue that in the playoffs. It's halftime here at Montville High School. It's the sports doctor making a house call here at halftime. Uh, New London, twenty to nothing over the Montville Indians thus far, and in a, in a game that's been a little up and down right here for, but. One unable to capitalize on some of the Montville errors, so we'll see if Montville can regroup at halftime. Uh, busy week once again in college football coming up. Again, we talked about Clemson uh, traveling at Boston College last week. The game of the year in the NCAA: Clemson and Louisville on Saturday night. Yeah, it came down to the last drive. Lamar Jackson he had a great night, what we all expected, but Clemson's offense they do were you, able to. Come do you up think? Big. I mean, you think Lamar Jackson hurt his Heisman Trophy status with that loss? I. He still had four or five touchdowns that game, but that's, that's he had a great game. One of the he played defenses very well. I think it all depends. I think Deshaun Watson, he might be the front runner right now because they're undefeated. But if they ever stumble and lose, I think Lamar Jackson might. A lot of talk about JT Barrett right now too with Ohio State. That I mean, when I watched those games last weekend, we talked a little bit too about the uh, the Michigan uh, Wisconsin game. Um, Michigan seems to have a hard time manufacturing points, uh, hard time scoring. Another rank one number four in the country right now. But you look at these other teams, you know, in the top five in college football, Clemson. 50, 60 points games. At will. Louisville, yep. score at will. Alabama. Alabama, score at will. Ohio State, score at will. I mean, so will that be the difference maker for, say, Michigan when they have to possibly play Michigan State and obviously Ohio State down the road? Because when you look at the personnel, especially Ohio State, Michigan does not have a player that lines up with J.T. Barrett. No, they don't. If they want to be able to make the playoffs, their offense is going to have to come around. Like, when they play Ohio State, Ohio State's going to put up a lot of points, so Michigan's going to have to be able to match them, figure things out, straighten everything out on their offense if they're going to want to make a go undefeated probably and go to the playoffs. Yeah, but Louisville didn't slip too far, and Louisville has that big game down the road, you know, against an undefeated Houston team. So, yeah, you know, Louisville good. could find themselves back in the mix as far as playing for a national championship. Yeah, unless there's four undefeated teams, which I highly doubt is going to happen. I, I think Louisville is still in the contention. They're in a tough conference. So 
after blowing out Florida State and having that close game with Clemson, I think they're still right there. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to sleep on Washington a little bit. They had a big win against uh, you know Stanford a few weeks ago. Crushed they them. Forty-four to six. Yeah. You know, a game that we didn't see uh, here on the East Coast because the game was you know uh, out, out in Stanford. But you know, Washington is another one of those teams in a down year this year for the Pac-10. You know, obviously, you know, Utah's uh, playing decent. Uh, Oregon's down. But, you know, Washington could be a playmaker here where if things broke right, and again, like you said, you talk about, you know, you're not going to have four undefeated teams playing in the national no. in, in, in the BCS. Someone will have a loss. But if Washington can stay undefeated, if they can take care of their business during the regular season and win the Pac-12 championship, they could find themselves in a hunt, too. Yeah, Pac-12 teams yet to make the college football playoffs, I'm pretty sure. And I don't really know much about Washington, but when I, when I woke up that morning, I was really surprised. To no, find they destroyed out. him. They destroyed him. Stanford was the favorite to win the Pac-12, but I think that now belongs to Washington. If they run the table, they have, they'll have to play a couple more tough games and then the Pac-12 championship. I think they'll make it to the championship if they do that. Uh, week uh, week five in the NFL, and obviously the big news of week five in the NFL right now is is uh, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Tom Brady returns tomorrow for the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, last night was one of those nights where you had a chance to sit down and watch a little football in between innings by the Red Sox game. You saw the Chip Kelly experiment continue to fail mm-hmm. with the San Francisco 49ers. They couldn't even beat a Drew Stanton-led Arizona Cardinals. Uh, you know, Chip Kelly is one of those guys, to me, he's, he's – his offense is a gimmick offense. Yeah. I mean. They're talking about taking Blaine Cabbard out now and making Kaepernick the quarterback, which I think made more sense because Chip Kelly likes to have a little bit of a running quarterback. So if they're able to put him in, maybe they'll put up some more yards. But I'm not so sure about Kaepernick as a thrower. Yeah, I'm not too sure about Kaepernick as pretty much anything right see. now. I mean, no. he's, you know, he's, he was relegated to. And they have Christian yeah. Ponder, too, third string. So maybe they'll try him out. Yeah, boy, oh, boy. That's really reaching. It's the, yeah, they need to find a quarterback this offseason. Yeah, Carlos Hyde's a pretty good pretty good back, too. I think he's had a touchdown every game or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's on my fantasy team. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a wise pick. He is. That's he's a good doing pick. Well so I far. figured he'd flourish under Chip Kelly's system with that, you know, read option, spread option. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, obviously the team is horrible. Yeah. Not going to get a lot of wins this year. All right, so New England 3-1 and one goes on the road to, uh, and takes on the Cleveland Browns. We'll destroy them. Yeah, I mean, is this, one of those, is this one of these 12-game stretches where you're going to see Tom Brady possibly put himself in a position to win the MVP? He could. I if he's been able to put up with the amount of yards that these quarterbacks around the total at the end of the year, he'll be four games less than them. But if he's able to maybe run the table with them, go 12-0, and 0, and put up maybe close to 4,000 passing yards. Well, I'm going to tell you a couple guys who you're going to hear a lot more of in the next few weeks. Not only Brady, Gronk, mm-hmm. was it one catch? Two catches? One catch, 11 yards one this catch, year. This year. Yep, that's it. One catch, 11 yards. Two games. Julian Edelman, mm-hmm. not done much. Outside of the first game of Garoppolo. But I mean, he's gonna get you know he's gonna get seven, eight catches a game now. Yeah, they're gonna be throwing the ball a lot more. So these and you know, my receivers. key, you know, one of the keys I think to this team moving forward too is keep your eye out now for the role that James White plays with this mm-hmm. offense. You know, he's you know the poor man's Deion Lewis, the scat back. Uh, they get away from Garrett Blunt a little bit because they have Tom Brady back there. But I think James White was also a guy I have in my fantasy team. Could play a big factor. Yeah, Brady likes to throw the ball to these pass-catching running backs. So until Deion Lewis is back, James Lewis is going to have a bigger role in the offense, less ground and pound with Garrett Blunt. But I think he'll get more touches with a couple screens, maybe some. Yep. Uh, draws. Pittsburgh Steelers heated up. They, they righted the ship a little bit up, that bad loss to the Eagles a few weeks ago. I mean, so right now, Pittsburgh, uh, Denver keeps the ball rolling, yep. 4-0. and And that defense hasn't missed a beat. Play the Falcons this week in Julio Jones after getting a 300-yard game, so... I'm interested to see how uh, Keith Salib is going to match up with them. Smile at me. That Denver Denver D is nasty. They're for real. And so is in Minnesota. They are. That Minnesota Viking defense. I watched them against the Giants the other night. The Giants were outmatched. Outmatched. And I've had enough about it. Oh, Odell Beckham, too. They're not throwing the ball to him enough is what I think. I mean, come on. Seriously? I think he had him beat a couple times downfield. I mean, do you want to? I'll talk to Casey. If they want to beat him, they got to take some chances. All right, so the Giants, it doesn't get any easier for the Giants as they head into... Lambeau and take on the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, Packers have one of the worst secondaries this year, though, so maybe Odell's going to have one of these breakout games to uh, change the Giants' season around. All right, what's up with you this weekend? This weekend, I'm going to watch some college football, NFL, yep. MLB playoffs. Blue Jays play on Sunday, so I'm excited to see that. Hopefully they can clinch. And Do you work no hoops this weekend? No hoops, bye week. You working out? I am. Okay, l- l- Every day this week. Weights and or running, or what are you doing? Mostly weights right now, but once basketball starts getting closer, I'm going to do some more conditioning. 
All right, good stuff. Have a good week at school. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you yep. next week. Stat Guru 2.0, and I'll bring back Casey O'Neill. It's a halftime house call with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, as we are 20 to nothing at halftime of New London taking on the Montville Indians. Casey, and i got to ask you something. You're a guy that you um, – uh, Three nothing, Boston College. Wow, over Clemson. That is a big game. Uh, Casey, maybe, maybe Lightning can hit the field <laughs> right now. All right, Casey, I gotta ask you a question. Yeah, uh, you know you work for a living. I do. Uh, you go to the ball games once in a while. Which ball games? I mean, are we would talking you go about? to a football game? Would you go to a basketball game? You've been to professional games. I've been to everything, college and professional, up and down the board. Take your son to a professional game. He's Take been to three to four different uh, major league games. So when stadiums. So as a guy that works for a living, a yes. guy that pays to get a ticket and yes. pays to to go see the athletes yes. perform, you wake up on a, on a Wednesday morning and you're scrolling through the scores in the Sports Center or the news or whatever it is, and you see Odell Beckham talking about how he's not having fun playing sports anymore. Are you like me and you want to throw a brick through the TV? Um, no, I, I, I think that happiness is not – we. money is one aspect of happiness. Anybody who doesn't – who thinks that – being a professional athlete isn't a grind and isn't grueling. Ah, don't start. It, it, it is. That the, his, what I would suggest to him is that, it, you know, there are plenty of other, he doesn't have, just like anyone else, he doesn't have to be in that profession. Yeah, but do you think though. the guy that goes to work every day to pay for the tickets so he can make his $13 million a year, do you think I want to hear that? I'm not happy playing football. But go, go, go dig a ditch. Why go it, why, go drive why, a UPS truck. Go why did, why did, work why for the it, Why does it have to be that? Why can't we discuss ways of, of making him happy? Or better yet, why couldn't he go be a why do we have to be why couldn't he be a neurosurgeon? I mean, why do we have to assume? Yeah, but to I'm, is the average guy wants to hear that crap? I don't understand why you're connect, what, what's the problem with someone saying that they're unhappy? Are you happy? Are you are you happy at UPS? Oh, very. You're happy all the time? Because I have texts that, that indicate the contrary. <laughs> So, so you know what? Again, I, somebody your, your somebody's salary, driving could, a truck. Your, your, yes, your salary. I think there are people who would probably look at the life you lead, uh, working at. Oh, UPS, it's glamorous. The money you make at UPS, coming here and being a radio personality uh-huh. yourself, and they would say to you, "Why don't you try? Uh, why don't you try cleaning out septic systems?" Uh, I can't. Before, before <laughs> I can't win with you, can I? <laughs> you know what? You know what you can do though. We can go back and revisit Casey and the sports doctor one week ago from Fitch High School, and I, when you and I asked you who the best team in professional football was. And you said it was the New England Patriots. You said the you Denver made, Broncos. And you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you gave me a minute on why. Yeah. And I said, well, how about the team that won the Super Bowl? A week later, I'll give yep. you another chance. Today, who's the best team in the NFL? The New England Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> they get Tom Brady come. I'm not going to bend on this, Phil. I was looking for Phil to get him on a halftime. He was down uh, selling brownies. So, so, so you're still holding on to that. Huh? I'm still holding on to Phil. I was going to have you as my halftime guest, Phil, but didn't you? You took off and stuff like that. Oh, boy. Casey, I thought you had connections here. You listen, if I hadn't showed up to a girls' soccer game, of all things, none of this might even have happened. Put him on. Put him, can I put him on for a second, Casey? Of course can you I can. I put Phil? You guys would have been, you guys would have been uh, over on the put, you, put your headset on so people can hear. Phil Orby, you're, you're on the air now, too. Oh, so. was I? Yeah, you know you're on the air now. So. Okay. All right, listen, you got a beautiful, you're beautiful night here in Montville. Uh, quite the contrast to last Friday against Ledger. Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah, nice crowd here and stuff like that. The field looks good. I mean, uh, the team seemed to hurt themselves a little bit in the first half. To be honest, I didn't quite uh, see too much of the game in the just first half. Shot and just nod and say yes. They they hurt themselves a little bit in the first half. Overall athletic picture here at Mount Montville High School. I, we're in good shape. I mean, uh, we're going through some growing pains in some of the sports. Uh, you know, we're having a pretty good season on both sides of the soccer teams. Uh, you know, our football team is doing, I think they're doing very well to hold yeah. New London to, to uh, 20 in the half. Uh, that last touchdown before the half hurt a little bit. A bit of a backbreaker, yeah. Yeah, and we're missing a couple of the skill, skill guys this week uh, just with some injuries. You know, they're battling. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, keep this thing close in the second half. Never stops for you, though. I mean, you've got football. I mean, and then you're going to roll into the, the, the winter sports with the basketball and, you know, the soccer going on now. And then you got baseball after that. I mean, a lot of people don't know the duties and the and just the actual detail that an athletic director has. Yeah, it, it's a fun job though. Uh, yeah, you're always on you're always on the go, and uh, I didn't get a chance to see too much of the first half, like I said. But there's always something to do, and you get to work with kids. And you can go on a day.com on Tuesday morning and watch the highlight package on Wired. So, did you um? Are you hearing the props that we're giving you? Can yes, you yeah, the yeah. Public announcing and all that. Do you miss um? Do you miss uh, the sidelines for baseball? Do you miss being in the dugout? Uh, I miss some aspects of it. Yeah. You know, every day that I'm not there or uh, not the head coach, it, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the first 
you know, last uh, spring wasn't the uh, most comfortable, but, you know, you get used to it. I'm that type of person. I'm, I'm pretty forward thinking. So uh, I leave that behind me. And, right. You know, I'm so occupied. In You're always life. a coach, though. You can't never take being a coach out of here. Well, you know, sometimes I, I look at myself as I now I get to coach our coaches and okay. uh, really just try to uh, help them along the way and, and uh, develop them and uh, try to get the programs going in the right direction. Oh, we appreciate the hospitality here tonight. Let's You're thank you, Casey. It's Casey wants to know where the food is in the press box, but I mean, geez, well, <laughs> sandwiches and everything. And uh, truth be told, if it wasn't for Casey O'Neill coming to support his niece, none of this would happen. Well, there you go. Then. Casey was the one that set this thing up. Yeah. You guys would be out in the parking lot. Yeah. Well, listen, doing we're, it from your car. Where is Mike anyway? Phil, thanks for a few yeah, minutes. Where is Mike? <laughs> thanks, Phil. I appreciate thank everything. You. All right, we'll talk to you. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for coming. Okay, we see it. We're gonna we're gonna have the basketball team on this year too. Hundred percent. Nice. Yes, we are. We're gonna do a basketball. We're doing we're covering all grounds this year. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't make the decisions. I just I laid it out there. Casey's <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> the guys the guys back at the shop. Maybe they with sports doctors making promises and cashing checks that he can't give. He's writing checks he can't cash. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Thanks, guys. All right, Phil. Thanks a lot. Casey, I mean, you're responsible for this case. How's it feel? That's, that's great. You come in, you make promises, and I'm going to be the one chasing down. That's all right. <laughs> Phil's going to be hounding you uh, in December. Where's, where's my basketball game? All, all right, right, so you, you, I mean, you want to throw me under the bus again with the Broncos, or are you all set? No, I'm going to throw you under the bus right now, though, because we're about ready to start the second half. Why don't you uh, let, lead us on in? All right, uh, left to right on the radio dial, the second half, and I give you the voice of game day, my good friend Casey O'Neill, in London, 20 to nothing as we start the second half. Whalers kick off to Montville, high end over end kick taken by Montville's Emmanuel Mayfield. Mayfield still on his feet and tumbles over the 30-yard line where Montville will set up first and 10 for its first possession of the second half. Now, you know, Phil made a, RB made a great point, though, about the Montville defense. You know, New London had six possessions in, the, yeah. in, in Montville territory and only actually seven possessions and only score on three of them. Uh, is really, you know, a testament to the Montville defense. The Montville defense played hard and, for the most part, did well defending New London. That first drive and then the last drive, uh, not so much. But the, oh, the, the openings, offense. yeah, the opening play of the game and then the last drive to close out the first half were the two killers for that new uh, Montville defense. Let's see what Montville does here in the second half, though, with the adjustments. Luke Hall, still the quarterback. Satiro and Glidden are the power I for the Indians. In motion, Greg Clark. Hall. Hands off to Glidden, and Glidden is hit behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. First play looks a lot like the previous one. Yeah, only 32 yards of total offense in the first half of the Montville Indians, and it's important for them to get something moving, get the ball rolling downfield, as they would say, get running downfield, clean up the penalties, uh, tackle a little bit better, and get all the things that Tanner Grove talked about last night. Montville, let's start executing a little bit. It's going to be second and 12. Uh, Satira was hit right behind the line of scrimmage. There's been nothing there. No. Uh, in the running game for Montville so far. They've been trying to run between the tackles. Not a lot going on so far, and they have not been able to get the ball in the hands of the dynamic Bradley Johnson. He's split wide left right now. Instead, we're going to have a little trick reverse that goes to Clark, and Clark is going to have a first down around left end of the 45-yard line. Nice play that time. They they faked the dive, gave yeah. the ball on instead on the on little... Uh, wing around by uh, Greg Clark, and uh, nice trickery that time. Now we're starting to see some of what we thought we were going to see from, from Montville and, and Tanner Grove, a little bit of creativity in the offense. Yeah, 13 yards on the carry that time by Clark. Their longest play from scrimmage thus far tonight. It's got Montville pushing the ball up towards midfield. Move the chains. They'll have it now first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Glidden is the tailback. They're in the eye. Glidden gets the handoff of right tackle. And powers ahead after about four yards. He gets into the second level before he's hit, which is a much better way of running for Montville. It's a little more of that downhill running they were looking for. Yeah, and again, we talked about offensive rhythm, offensive tempo, back-to-back -back positive plays. Down in distance, second down and five. Montville picking up a little steam right now against this stingy. Whaler defense. I always love the early parts of the second half to see what adjustments were made by the coaches. It's always one of the fascinating things yeah. to me is what wrinkles they come out with in the second half. Second and five for the Indians. A same play on that little end around again to Clark. He's got another first down in the open. Crosses the 40 down to the 35 yard line. That's the second time they've run that play and there's something brewing there with that. Yeah, nice job that time by Clark getting to the edge and you see his speed and quickness. Two carries for 37 yards uh, for Clark, 
Nice job that time getting himself to the edge and making a play. So basically all it is, folks, is they're getting New London to over-pursue in one direction by pulling the guards that way and sending them the, the backs that way, yeah. pretending they're going to sweep one. Yeah, almost like an inside, sw inside jet sweep. Yeah. Exactly, and then, the, and, then the, and then Clark, who was playing, was playing in the slot, comes in and takes the ball in a reverse handoff almost in the other direction. Misdirection. Hall, under center, hands off to Glidden, off a right tackle. Glidden, Glidden hit very quickly behind the line by Elijah Parker. It's going to be a gain of about a yard and a half, two yards, second and eight, Montville. And again, the one thing that glares out to me here as we start the second half is a quicker pace and a quicker tempo uh, with play calling, plays coming in from the sidelines. Montville trying to move with some sort of purpose out there, and it's showing as we start the second half. One thing Montville has lacked over the past couple of years is some stability at quarterback. They lost their quarterback to start the year, but sophomore Luke Hall has done a nice job keeping things stable for this Montville offense right now, and they're moving the football here with the opening possession of the second half. Hall hands off to Glidden. Glidden off a right tackle, cuts it back inside after maybe two yards, falls forward for another, and it'll bring up third and five, ball 27-yard line. So third. Shorter third down than Montville's had in the uh, previous goings. Yeah, third and five, and you know Tanner Grove has got to be thinking two down in territory now to pick up those five yards and you know really relying on his offensive line this drive. And they've done a nice job thus far to open the second half. Third and five, under nine minutes to go here in the second in the third period. Bradley Johnson goes out wide left for the Indians. Glidden is the tailback, handoff strip the middle to Sotero, and he is not going to get the first down. Maybe two before Elijah Parker comes in from his end position and gets him after a gain of a yard. It's going to be fourth and three. Ball's going to sit right on the 25-yard line. Seven plays, 47 yards to open up the second half here for the Montville Indians as they got something brewing a little bit on offense to bring up a big fourth down. And uh, let's see, a short three, a long four, looks like Case. Yep, ball sitting right at the 25-yard line. It's going to be... About three and change here for the Indians on fourth down. It's a big play here for this Indians offense. They send Bradley Johnson out wide right. Glidden will be the tailback. And Sotero's the fullback. They'll go from the eye. Clark is the wing. They do that inside reverse to Clark. Ball's, Ball's on out. the turf. And it's going to be recovered by Elijah Parker at the 27-yard line. So they went to the well one too many times with that play. And the New Whalers not only hold, but turnover on downs. Third turnover of the night for the Montville Indians. The heads up, Elijah Parker pouncing on the ball, putting an end to the longest sustained drive of the night for the Montville offense. Elijah Parker has had himself a ball game here tonight at Montville High School. 8.01 remaining in the third period. New London holds. They would have held if they had made the tackle, but with the turnover... Instead, they get the ball a little bit farther up ahead, the 26-yard line. Whalers come out with Twins right and Commander as the lone setback. Gomez sends Gio Lopez, excuse me, call that effort Santiago in motion. Now Santiago gets the handoff up the middle, breaks a tackle off of right. Hash mark cuts it back up for a gain of five. So Efren Santiago, that's a formation we hadn't seen before, bringing him from the wide receiver yeah. position into the backfield. Yeah. Four carries for 39 yards for Santiago, and you saw the quick feet. In the hole that time by Efron Santiago, like you said, came off of his wide receiver position, took the handoff, turned it upfield for a nice gain of, let's call it six yards on first down. Second down, and we'll call it four. Ball at the 32-yard line. Gomez under center. He's got four wide. Commander is the lone set. Gomez to throw. Has time. Throws it on a slant to Gio Lopez at the 42 Incomplete, well defended by Bradley Johnson on the play. Ball thrown a little, a little bit behind, behind. Yeah, a little behind Gio Lopez. You know, uh, Gomez has got to get the ball out in front of Lopez because he's got a lot of speed. Let him make a play on it. Let him run to it. A little touch on the ball. Get Gio Lopez in the open field. Casey, another one of those kids played basketball last year, along with D Major Roman. Very good athlete, Gio Lopez. 7 16, now third and three for the Whalers. Again, same formation. Commander as the lone set. Gomez looking to throw. Pressured. Gomez rolls to his left. Throws downfield and incomplete. Had Lopez open at midfield. Gomez probably could have run for the first down that time as they had plenty of turf in front of him. Yeah. But he tried to throw it on the run. Yeah. Tough pass and just short for Gio Lopez at midfield. And the Whalers may punt for the first time tonight. Yeah, I'm looking at the coaching staff over on the far side and they're all kind of shaking their heads. And they're all kind of bobbing around, frustrated with Gio Lopez. He did have a lot of green in front of him. I think Melquan Gomez could have run for it. And I think Gio Lopez should have broken it back 
to come help his Yeah, help your guy out. Yeah, come back to him. So into punt will be Gennaro Davis. Uh, excuse me, will be uh, Owen George. The freshman gets off a low spiraling kick, lands at midfield, and takes a whaler bounce inside the Montville 35-yard line down to the 32. So the freshman, Owen George, quarterback slash punter, which means he doesn't get a lot of time in either direction. If the Whalers are playing well, he doesn't get on the field. No, no, he, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's a talented kid too, isn't he? He can throw the football as a freshman. The future is bright there. The Whalers will not do a lot, a lot differently offensively next year with a lot of the same skill position players back and a quarterback. 20 to nothing, New London on top here. Just under seven minutes remaining in the third period. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor Keith O'Brien. You're listening to Game A, <laughs> live on the day.com. The Stat Guru 2.0. Giving me Boston College stats and scores. Down, they're down 7 3 right now. Well, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Right now, there are 12 people in the world <laughs> that care about that score, and two of them are sitting to my right. The uh, junior voice of game day is out there somewhere with my nephew, Gavin. Where is he? He's out there playing touch football with Gavin DeLucia, one of the young athletes in the, for the future of Montville. I talked earlier about my niece, Alexis DeLucia. She's a two-sport athlete at Montville High School, the only freshman to make the varsity soccer team. Scored her first varsity goal last week. She's also a lacrosse player. A little plug for my niece, who is not only beautiful and talented, but a much better athlete than me. How's your dad doing? Does he ever come out to these games at all or not? My dad, uh, unless you're at, the, at Great Neck Country Club or his living room, will not, <laughs> will not, you will not see my father. I'm sure he's tuning in. Luke Hall under center. Hands the ball off to Glidden off a right tackle, and Austin Glidden puts his head down, hit initial contact right at the line of scrimmage, but he'll fall forward for a gain of about three. He's, he's still playing a little out. golf? My dad? Yeah, he's still out there. Oh, my nice week of weather this he week. He just finished. Uh, they just finished. Him and another guy just finished second in the senior two ball, and he finished ninth this year in the uh, in the senior uh, open. Yeah. So yeah, he's still yeah, playing. He's moving it. Shot his age at seventy-one years old. That's a boy, oh boy. That's a good round. That's a good round. You and I will play next week. Next Friday, we'll go out there and see if we can't uh, ham and egg it through. The uh, I'm sure we will. At a brand new course this time. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go on second and long. Hall to throw, hitch and go to Johnson, and he oh he. Miscommunication, and it was almost intercepted by Monty Johnson. 0 for 3 passing, uh, you know, for the Hall in this game. And that time, he had Bradley Johnson on the hitch and in the go. Hall threw to the hitch. Johnson was on the go, and he was wide open that time. But fortunately for, Mont- for Montville, New London's Monty Johnson was also yeah, on he, the hitch. He, yeah, he sat on the hitch. And it would have been an interception and a pick six, but overthrown. So pick <laughs> six on the hitch. Three things happened, and they were all bad. They the all the fact that it was such a bad throw actually worked out, all yeah. things considered, for Montville. Third and long now for the Indians. They send Johnson and Clark wide out to the right. Hall fakes the throw, rolls, going to throw it, looking across for Clark, and it's dropped at the 40-yard line. Greg Clark had, uh, but and Bradley Johnson's got his hands up. At yeah, the he end. had. A, yeah, Bradley Johnson was in the secondary, running free. He had a couple of steps that time. But here's the thing, and New London knows this. Luke, can't, Luke Hall can't throw the ball that far. Not on the run like that. Not while he's rolling out like that. He's always going to check down underneath. That's right. You can't throw the ball 40 yards right. rolling right. So New London, they sat at a certain point, knowing that you know, go ahead, right. Bradley Johnson, you go ahead, run as far as you want. The ball's not going to get there. That's a tough throw to make. You uh, planting your feet, never mind on the run. Oh, absolutely. Clark into kick for Montville. And he lets off a low line drive, and it's going to be bouncing and knocked around by Parker. Parker loses, and it's on the turf. And Montville's going to recover the football. Coming out of it for the way with the Indians is going to be Dominic Edmonds. And the Indians are going to recover a London mistake at their Whaler 27 yard line. Edmonds, the sophomore, great special teams awareness. And Elijah Parker just never knew what he wanted to do there. Now, that's the first kind of real mistake we've seen New London make thus far this evening. And it cost them because it gives uh, Montville great field position, first and 10 from the 26-yard line. Got to remember some. You got It's hard to remember sometimes. These are 15, 16, 17-year-old yeah. kids. Parker he just, was caught in no man's yeah, land. Yeah, he came it's like a, an infielder who gets an in-between hop. He didn't yeah. know whether he wanted to come get it on the right. run or get it on the bounce and instead he got caught and then once it touched him he had yeah, the ball on it, he couldn't do it so first and 10 Montville their best field position of the game at the Whaler 27 Hall hands off to Glidden Glidden stutter steps in the hole cuts it back left not much there though gain of a yard this Whaler run defense has been exceptional nine carries for 14 yards for Glidden is he has found no room up front between the tackles 
against this New London Whaler defense. Nine carries for 14 yards. All tough running yards. I have to tell you, I'm drinking a Lipton Diet Green yeah, how is Citrus, it? and this is awful. Terrible. Oh, Lipton, what are you doing to me? Terrible. Right now? I mean, the, 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 the Mrs. Uh, game day is here. She, we have, listen, we had no treats at halftime. No, nothing. I, I, what's, what's going on? We have to bring that up at halftime. We'll put her on notice. We'll put her up. Hall rolls, pressured, throws in the flat, outstretched arms of Clark, incomplete. Pressure from Billy Clark that time on Hall, and he out overthrew the outstretched arms of Greg Clark. Yeah, Hall is 0 for 5 and basically running for his life back there in the pocket, if there is such thing as a pocket for this Montville offense. Try to get him on the edge a little bit. Try and roll him out, see what happens. But, you know, he's got no time to set his feet and throw the football downfield. Part of the problem is that we've got Monty Johnson guarding Bradley Johnson, and we've got Billy Clark rushing the quarterback while he's throwing it to Greg Clark. I mean, it's too, too many <laughs> yeah, of their yeah. names. Give me a Smith. Give Johnson me something and Johnson. Up. Yeah, Johnson, Johnson, Clark, and Clark. Come on. It's like a law firm out there. Second and long for the Indians. Hall under center. Hall, straight drop, looking to throw. Pressured. Throws it in the flat, and it's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Star Stokes. Out on the cornerback position, dangerous throw by Hall. He was looking for Clark, and Stokes read it all the way. Star Stokes jumped the route and had about 75 yards of green turf in front of him. He was eyeing the end zone before he had the ball in hand that time, Casey. Speaking of the Mrs. Game Day, she's she's smiling. Oh, we got a smile. Yeah, smile for the picture. You're on camera. As Junior Boys Game Day. Junior Voice of Game Day is probably heading to the concession stand. The only reason he wouldn't be in the press box is because he knows there's a concession stand out there. All right, big fourth, big fourth down, down to nine here for Montville. They send Bradley Johnson wide left, and, of course, Monty Johnson has been shadowing him all night long. Luke Hall, under center, straight drop, has time. Now he's pressured, and down goes Hall, sacked by Dante Ford. And turnover on downs for the Indians. And again, that was a one-man route that time by Monville, sending Bradley Johnson out down the sidelines. Just no time whatsoever to haul, to set his feet, look downfield, and make the throw. There are very few people in this league who can go out on an island one-on-one -on -one week in, uh, with Bradley Johnson, but Monty Johnson is one of them, and he's really taken away Johnson. That and the fact that there was no time to throw that time. Dante Ford was right inside of Luke Hall. He's been under duress. Is that a good word right it there? Is. Duress all night. First and ten, handoff up the middle to Commander. Commander bounces off a tackle, still on his feet. It doesn't go down. All the way to the first down. Jacob Commander that time refused to let his knees touch the ground. He used his hand to stay up, and finally Jack Ware brought him down. But um, what a tough run by Commander, that low center of gravity. Yeah. Seven carries for 85 yards for Jacob Commander. 49 of them coming on that first initial play of the game. But, again, I like – he's a good-looking young back. He's got a – you know, like you said, that low center of gravity. Uh, you know, he uses his hand, everything. He's just a tough kid to bring down. You ever seen an, a, a surfer or a skateboarder when they're yeah. riding, they put their hand down for balance? That's what he does when he runs the football. He when puts he, his hand down listen, for Listen, when, when he takes his helmet off, too, he looks like a little Billy Sims. He's got a big afro going on. He looks good. Football player. Handoff with to Billy Clark, new tailback in the game for New London, and Billy Clark hits the hole hard and gets a gain of about seven yards off a left tackle. I like the, the speed to the hole that time, Billy Clark. Billy Sims. Remember Billy Sims? I do. Oh, you? I do. Heisman Trophy winner in 79. Played You're for old. Barry Switzer. That's who Jacob Commander reminds me of. Billy Sims. Yeah, that's a great, you know, that's a, that's a low center of gravity. Yeah, yeah, high, yeah, high yeah. Shoulders. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's he's good, good yeah. That's a Tough. good one. You're old. No one here. There's only five <laughs> people here that were born in time to watch that. Yeah, sure. They're, and they're all in the booth. And they're all in the booth right now. Seventy nine Heisman. <laughs> Melquan Gomez hands off to Commander. Commander's got some room. Commander's got the sideline. Commander cuts it back inside. Commander's at the twenty. Inside the twenty and wrestled down at the fifteen yard line. Did he fumble the football? And he fell on back on no. top of it. Or what do we got? He fumbled the ball. And we fell back on top of it though. So Jacob Commander. With a heck of a run and recovering his own fumble, but that if fullback that, dies. Yeah, if that's not Billy Sims, I don't know who is out there. Jacob Commander, huge run that time. First and ten, Whalers like, inside the 20. Like that running style, Casey. I formation for the Whalers, and we're going to have a timeout on the field. Timeout called on the first and ten play, and we will have... A first down play on the other side of the timeout. Montville wants to talk it over. While they're talking it over, we will 
fill you in on the out-of-town scoreboard. There's nothing going on tonight outside of this game. But in Major League Baseball, nothing good going on in Major League Baseball. No. Red Sox got shut out 6-0. That series is over. Toronto beat Texas 5-3. That series is over. The Dodgers still holding on to a 4-3 lead over Washington. And San Francisco and Chicago later on tonight. A little bit of a gash today at work. A little bit of a gash today. You cut yourself at work? A little gash. Well, you know what you should have done? You should have headed on down to Lawrence Memorial Hospitals. You know what, Lawrence Memorial Hospital? they got walk-ins now, sports doctor. Sure. Walk-ins available. No appointment necessary. Great quality medical care. Go on down to Lawrence Memorial Hospitals. New locations opening all the time. Four convenient locations in southeastern Connecticut for all your medical needs. And after you're done feeling good about yourself, you go down to MJ Sullivan Auto Mall down there in the corner of Broad and Coleman Street in New London and get yourself a brand new car at MJSullivanAuto.com. First and ten. Being New London Whalers. Home and first and ten Whalers from the 18. Hand off up the gut. It goes to Commander. Commander breaks a tackle. Commander still on his feet. And Jacob Commander, we salute you. Touchdown, Whalers. In command, Commander. And again, I... Listen, he reminds me so much of Billy Sims out there, and I know I'm showing my age. Nine carries for 131 yards, three touchdowns tonight for Jacob Commander. Steve Bollinger had a hold of him at the line of scrimmage, and Commander just just ran away from him, ran right out of the grasp, and no chance. He's a tough kid. Big night for Commander, three touchdowns. Extra point is up, and it is good, and with... Three minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the third period. The Whalers tack on their 27th point of the night. They lead Montville 27 to nothing. Jacob Commander's touchdown run caps off a four-play, 70-yard drive, just like that, from one end of the field to the other for the London Whalers. Offense seems to be kicking things into high gear. 262 total yards. You know, Casey, when that, you know, come out of the start of the second half, we saw Montville move the ball, get stopped on fourth down. And New London switched the tides of momentum wise, went right down the field in four plays for six points. So the, the games to look at the schedule right now for New London, there's three games that they kind of have to mark on the schedule. I mean, Waterford is undefeated right now. Yeah, and I think that would be a good ball game. And I think Waterford has some confidence. They have a playmaker at quarterback in Spencer Hoagland. So I, I look forward to seeing that game. They, you have to wonder going on the road to Wilbur Cross. I mean, that's a it's a road game, a long travel. Yeah. You know, see what happens there. And then. I think there's every possibility that the Whalers will be undefeated on Thanksgiving Day, and that will be a game that we will bring you on game day. If Where's are, that game? At NFA this year? Uh, that's a very good question. I, I think it's at NFA. And it, it will be uh, a game that we will bring you. So, it's that at New London. Thank it's you. It's at New London. London. See, that's why you asked Mike McLaughlin yeah, what's Mike's going on. Why am I relying on you? I got the most knowledgeable guy in the history I'm of guessing. the Southeast of Connecticut to my left. End over end kick comes down, and it's taken by Mayfield. At the 20-yard line, Mayfield tries to go to the left end and is going to not make it to the outside. Couldn't get outside the hash marks that time as the Whalers speed to the perimeter, round them up, and the Indians will have it at the 29-yard line. Montville's coming off of their most successful offensive possession in the last drive, seven plays for 59 yards, and let's just see if they can keep things going and capitalize see, on that. See, what you have to understand is before there was Google, before you could ask Siri, there was Mike McLaughlin. And then you had to say, if you said, if you needed to know who, what, who, you know, who had the third touchdown in the 1972 Thanksgiving Mike, you game, the, yes, Mike McLaughlin. Mike, Mike Sheen dug the bows right out here? Of course. Mike Sheen dug the bows. Of course yeah. he has. Yeah, that, he's, sure. He was Google and before there was Google. He's the high school football Google. Three minutes and eight seconds remaining. Montville, Hall, fakes the pitch, gives it instead to Clark. And that play, uh, I think, has ceased to fool the Whalers. That play has run its course. If the sports doctor could say that, run yeah. its course. Michael wrapped him up very quickly from his linebacker position, and uh, and that one that got him the first two times. That was the uh, that was sort of the little inside end uh, end around, and uh, that worked twice. And the last two times resulted in a fumble and a loss of two. So I think we can shell that one. A very very tough task, a daunting task for sophomore quarterback Luke Hall to be down twenty seven nothing, taking on his wheel of defense. Clark and Johnson split right. Hall. Rolls right, wants to throw. Deep down the field, he's looking for Bradley Johnson, and it's intercepted by Monty Johnson at the 42-yard line. Fourth turnover of the night for the Montville Indians. Bradley Johnson one-on-one -on -one out there with Monty Johnson, and Johnson beats Johnson. 
I like Monty Johnson, a very, very good athletic player. He plays both sides of the ball, Casey. Again, that time you saw Bradley Johnson fall down and Monty stay up. Yeah, Another not, turnover. Not only is he a great athlete. Yeah, usually you get your great athletes, you put them out, out in the secondary, you say, play, go play cornerback. This is a kid who knows how to play cornerback. He's not just a good athlete. He's a natural cornerback. He, he, knows, is, how to, he yeah. knows how to run with the receiver. He's always aware of where the football is. He is Johnson Island. Never mind Revis Island. He is Johnson Island out there. One-on-one -on -one against Bradley Johnson. Tremendously talented young football player. Joined in the booth by the junior voice of game day, along with my nephew, Gavin DeLucia. Two minutes and 19 seconds remaining here in the third period. Gomez fakes the dive to Commander. Gomez is going to keep it himself. Not much there. Breaks a tackle and wrestled to the ground by Vinette. And Ware after a gain of about two. Gomez doing a nice job tucking and running that time. Took a bit of a shot that time by Ware at the end of the run. Two minutes and counting now remaining here. 27-0, New London on top. We're in the third period. New London going left to right on your in your imagination. And again, we talked about this all night, Casey. There's no player personnel changes in there from New London. They run their guys out there, and they run different formations with the same personnel. Gomez hands off on the dive to Commander. Commander falls forward off the left tackle, and actually Gomez kept that ball I was wrong Gomez kept that ball on the quarterback keeper it looked like he tucked it looked like he gave it in the commander commander took it up on, on the dive and he told me he kept it himself and he rolled down at the 50 yard line so Melquan Gomez had his all fooled you'll see number 45 that time coming on an offense uh, by Sean Pemberton and that's one of the very few substitutions that we've seen all night for this New London Whaler team they have their base personnel they run many different formations in different sets using their base personnel. Loye and Santiago go wide right. Gio Lopez wide left. Gomez. Gomez hands off to Pemberton. Pemberton breaks a tackle. Pemberton has a first down. Nice job by Pemberton that time, getting into the secondary of the Indians. Another low center of gravity, tough runner. Again, on cue, Najee Pemberton came in from the sidelines, did what he had to do, tough run up the middle for six yards. Keeping the sticks moving for this Whaler offense. First down, Whalers. Now they're at the Montville 44-yard line. 42 seconds remaining, and the clock is running here in the third period. New London on top, 27 to nothing. And we're starting to see New London run some offense now, put some drives together, piece some things together on the ground, through the air. Beginning of the game, Casey was all home run hitting ability. Now it's a little bit more of a methodical approach. Trips left for New London. In motion goes Major Roman Gomez. Straight snap, hands the ball off to Pemberton, and that time Pemberton is hit immediately by Bollinger right at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down and long for the Whalers. Uh, 14 tackles on the night for Bollinger. One of the bright spots for this Montville defense as we close out the end of the third quarter here at Montville High School. It is the New London Whalers 27, Montville nothing. Yeah, one of the uh, strengths of the Montville defense is their linebacking core. You talk about the job that Bollinger's done tonight, Luke Keekley-esque has been Bollinger, yeah. but that Montville High School defense is led by senior linebacker Jack Ware. And one of the things about Jack Ware that is very rare for a high school football player is that uh, head coach Tanner Grove has given Ware the responsibility and the trust to call out the defensive signals while he's on the field. Now, in the history, sure. in the 11 years that Tanner Grove has been coaching here at Montville High School, only two players have had the responsibility and been given that level of trust right. by Tanner Grove. And that was in 2009, Ricky Fort, and in 2012, Isaiah Holloway. So in all of his 11 years, uh, Ware is only the third player who has shown the ability, the uh, football IQ as well as the, uh, the trust, earned the trust of trust. the coach to be able to call out the defensive signals. And they have turned in a very good defensive effort. Even tonight, down 27 nothing. the defense has been put in impossible position yeah, and that's the, time after time. Yeah, I'm sorry, Casey. That's the big thing, too, is you, you hit on it, the trust. The trust the coaching staff has in the young man and the player. He's a senior. He's been around here, uh, you know, for four years. And he's on the same page as Tanner Grove. Twelve minutes. We're just starting the fourth quarter. In motion goes Major Roman. Gomez now. Hands the ball off to Pemberton. Not much there. Second down and nine as Pemberton goes off left tackle and gets maybe a yard. So that'll be 
bring up a third and long. Whalers, though, right now just eating up clock. Time is on their side as they're ahead 27 to nothing. Whalers looking to move to 4-0 on the season and continue their undefeated start. Looking also to crack in the top 10 in the state as they've been starting to receive some votes, and this effort will certainly help. Trips left for the Whalers. Now in motion comes Roman. Melquan Gomez, barking signals, straight drop, wants to throw. Gomez pressured, avoids it, rolls to his left, still rolling, stiff arms, and ridden out of bounds by Vinette, and will get a flag on the play. Maybe a little bit of extracurricular activity by Gomez. Gomez that time avoided the rush of Nick Angel off the uh, end position, rolled away to his strong side, his left side, but could not avoid the net, and we will have a flag on the play. We'll see what the officials want to call, but it's the first penalty of the half. We had a penalty-free third quarter which was remarkable, but this one, however, will go against New London. It's going to be a personal foul, uh, delay of game against Melquan Gomez. What that makes, not a personal foul, but a dead ball foul. Personal uh, foul, no, but a five-yard delay of game penalty against Melquan Gomez for his little uh, antics. I think he threw the football away once he got out of bounds. So it'll be fourth and 15, ball marked at the 49-yard line, and for only the second time today, Owen George comes in the game to punt. He stands at his own 40-yard line. Austin Glidden and Greg Clark are back at their own 20 to receive the punt for Montville. Snap is high. George fields it, and he gets over a high, wobbly kick that bounces at the 25-yard line and takes a good New London bounce and down by Major Roman right at the 20-yard line. So with 11 minutes even on the clock remaining in this football game, Montville will take over. First and 10 right on its own 20-yard line. They trail 27 to nothing to the New London High School Whalers. You're listening to Game Day live on theday.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, stat guru 2.0 to my right. we got the junior voice of Game Day in the back of the booth with his playing, a little, uh, playing on the phone with his cousin. You know, it's already we're losing interest. Big crowd out there tonight. A lot of folks here tonight. I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited in line for a, for a drink at halftime, couldn't get one. A lot of players out there. It's because there's nothing else going on. No. Stonington jackets, some ledger jackets, you name it, they're out there. Hand off to Glidden, and Glidden can't get to the outside. He's wrapped up immediately as he tries to get outside by Fisher Exum. Nothing there for, and Michael was on the tackle as well, nothing there for the Montville running back, and it'll bring up a second and 15. Whaler defense just absolutely pinned their ears back now getting pressure every chance they can. Yeah, playing well. Not much going on in the passing game tonight for young sophomore quarterback Luke Hall. Tough task taking on this new London defense. Second and 15. Ball sits at the 26-yard line of Montville. Bradley Johnson held in check tonight by Monty Johnson of the Whalers, but he is split wide right. And we will have our second penalty of the half. A delay Looks game. like it's going to be a delay of game against Montville. That'll back them up five more. Heading in the wrong direction are the Indians. Seven penalties for 63 yards for the Montville Indians. And it could have been a lot more because of the back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back to back flags, uh, 4th of July 20-gun uh, salute, as you called it. Second and 20, Hall to throw, looking down in the corner, trying to get to Johnson. And Hall and Johnson have hey, not no. been on the same page yet tonight. Now 0 for 8 for Hall passing and again he is throwing to the outside to the sidelines and his wide receivers running down the numbers going into the middle of the field and you hit the nail on the head Casey not on the same page whatsoever. Bradley Johnson's got some wheels. If they could find a way to get him the ball downfield, it big, he has big playability but they got to get him the rock. Well, I, and I don't want to blame anybody, but Bradley Johnson's a senior, and he's been in this offense for a while. Luke Hall is yeah. only a sophomore. So I think Hall has probably yet to figure out what Johnson likes to do, what his tendencies are. But you got to wonder where are the bubble screens, you know, where are the little uh, other ways of getting the ball in Johnson's hand. Hall looking to pass, overthrows Clark, defended on the play by Star Stokes, incomplete, and it'll be 
fourth down, and Montville will punt with 9.52 remaining here in the ballgame. Yeah, no trickery, no misdirection stuff outside of the inside handoffs on the jet sneaks, no bubble screens, nothing to stop the pursuit of the New London defense thus far from this Waterford Montville team. Again, they're in a tough spot. You're down 27 0, uh, but no real wrinkles to slow down uh, the defensive front for the Whalers. Clark will punt from his own end zone. Elijah Parker and Monty Johnson stand at their at the Montville 40. High snap, flag on the play before the play got off, so we'll see what that flag is all about. It's going to be against in London. And he's going to have a offsides against the Whalers, trying to get to that punt. And it was a high snap. They might have had a chance at it, but that'll move it up five yards, but it was fourth and 20, so Montville will still punt the football. You know, how good can this New London team be? Does that remain to be seen yet? Uh, I, yeah. The, the, I mean, they played a good team in Killingly. I, I real, I'll tell you after this punt what, what I think Moth, uh, New London needs to do. Clark gets the uh, snap and delivers a low kick, and it's fielded on the line drive by Elijah Parker. He wasn't messing around with that one. No. And he falls down at the 40-yard line where the Whalers will have possession. So, yeah, how good I mean, how good can they be? I mean, again, you know, they've had, um, you know, they beat Slime, obviously. Uh, their toughest game to, to date was two weeks ago against Killingly, coming off of a bye. Now, this is, to me, in my opinion, uh, going to be a very good win against a tough, tough Montville team at 2-2. Two and two. So it's a little bit sloppy. But at the same time, it's so easy. I mean, they have not been challenged at all on the defensive side of things. I want to see what a really good offense does against them. Yeah. So killingly, we thought had one, and they yeah. and they handled them pretty well. Gomez under center, hands off to Billy Clark. Clark off a right tackle, gets into the secondary, rides his defender down towards a first down marker, about eight-yard gain on first down. Yeah, fresh legs by Billy Clark that time, hitting the hole off the right-hand side, Casey. And again, another one of those kids... You know, along with Pemberton, to seeing some time here in the second half. An added weapon, an added luxury for Coach Juan Roman. I feel like they could hand the ball to Commander 30 times or yeah. Efren Santiago 30 times and get away with it. I feel like they could go spread and Gomez throw the ball around. So I think like they have, I mean, they have a lot and of Gio weapons. Lopez is out there as well. Clark breaks a tackle, heads to the outside, now tries to cut it back inside, but he slips and takes a knee. Uh, yeah, he was down. Right at the 31-yard line. So he'll be short of the first down and bring up third and one. So I feel like offensively the Whalers have a lot. I mean, they could do almost anything they want to do. The question is going to be, what is their identity going to be when they face a good team? The good news is, if they if they face a good pass defense, they can run the football. And if they right. face a good run defense, they can throw the football. And they do have some weapons. And Major Roman is an equalizer in a lot of different ways. The question is going to be, I'm seeing Montville get some pressure on them. So can they pass, you know, block for Melquan Gomez right. against a good defense? That will remain to be seen. Third and short. Gomez hands off to Clark. Clark's got a first down. He's into the secondary before he's ridden down by Vinette. But a first down, Whalers crossing into the 20, past the 25-yard line to the 23. Four carries for 24 yards for Clark. A nice change of pace out there for the senior tailback. He is making plays in the hole. He's got some quick feet, and he throws his head down for the last two or three yards. Tough run that time by Billy Clark. And we'll talk about the Whaler defense on the other side of things here in a moment. Under eight minutes remaining now. Gomez under center, straight drop, drop, looking to throw, looking in the corner, throws it over Roman's head to the pylon, incomplete. Nice coverage out there by Bradley Johnson. Double coverage along with Austin Glidden. Five for 12 for 70 yards thus far in this ballgame for Melquan Gomez as he is... Uh, Looked at Major Roman's way many a times, and I believe he only went one reception tonight from Major Roman. One catch for 26 yards for D, Major Roman. Yeah, that was at the end of the first half. Yeah. He put it up for grabs, and Roman went and got it. So it'll be second down and 10 for New London. Ball at the 20, excuse me, at the 26-yard line. Gomez under center, hands off on the fullback dive to Pemberton, and he gets about two off a left tackle before he's wrapped up. It'll bring up third down. Uh, I think the Whaler defense hasn't really been challenged. I'd like to see what they can do now. We thought that um, Killingly had a really good running game. They seem to, I mean, they've given up no rushing yards tonight. No. Outside of the couple of trick plays that Montville ran. Yeah. I mean, defend, they have, and, and yeah, I don't know how well you can throw the ball. they got multiple guys who can cover. Yeah, Johnson's back there. Monty Johnson, Gio Lopez is in the uh, defensive backfield. 
So, hey, you get some skill people. Yeah, defensive people with skill. Yeah, so, I mean, they're a solid team. I mean, like anything else, it's going to be about mistakes, special teams, things like that. Gomez, straight drop, looking to throw. Again, Pylon, go, um, uh, looking for Roman in the end zone. He overthrew him. That Same time, play. That time, Major Roman had a step on Bradley Johnson, but Gomez just overthrew him, and that'll bring up fourth and ten, but I think the Whalers will likely go for it. I don't know how much I love the Whalers' special teams. Their, their, kick, their place kicker is okay, but I don't get the sense that he's a field goal guy. Um... Owen George, the freshman, is, is a punter. He's a, a freshman shaky. punter. I don't know that they, you know, we saw Spencer Hoagland as a weapon, right? As a, yeah, yeah. I don't know that that they they have a weapon in the punting, kicking game. Their return game is certainly, a, they have weapons in the return game. But I don't know if they need a 35-yard field goal. I think they're going to have to go for it. You know what I, I mean? Think I, Water, I think Waterford has, a, has the player in Spencer Hoagland who could put a little pressure on that New London defense. You know what I'm saying? Be the first quarterback. Put a little face. pressure yeah. on him, yeah. yeah. Fourth and ten, Whalers. Gomez under center. Mata looking to pressure. They do. Gomez has time. Steps up. Fires a bullet to Gio Lopez. Incomplete. And Lopez is popped by Gennaro Davis at the ten-yard line. And the Whalers will turn the ball over on downs. There was pressure on Gomez. He stepped up and threw a laser beam. To Gio Lopez. David Price could have used that fastball tonight for the Red Sox. Boy, oh boy. That was a heater. And Lopez, that boy, he had no chance of catching that no, ball. No, he did not. And then he got popped on top of it by Gennaro Davis. And he paid the price for it. Yeah, there's nothing <laughs> worse than a receiver not catching and getting a hit on top so of it. David Price could use that fastball, and then he paid the price. 6.55 remaining here in the ball game. The price is right. Nothing for the Whalers on top. Montville football. At the 22-yard line, call it, yeah, 22. Hall, hands off, straight up the middle, nothing there. The Whaler, I got to say, the Whaler run defense has been very impressive. That was Sotero that time, and he has had nothing. The Whaler, speaking, yeah. speaking of the uh, aforementioned Spencer Hoagland, yeah. he's in attendance. In time, oh, he's right? here. He, yeah. all right. Just come up to the game day. Not, wear, not so wearing, not wearing uh, Waterford blue, though. Oh, all right. Wearing uh, wearing Celtic wearing Celtic green. Yeah, Celtics in town tomorrow. But you afternoon. recognize the hair anywhere. Celtics in town tomorrow afternoon at the Mohegan Sun. Are they? Yes, sir. That's fantastic. I tell you something about about that in a minute here. Hall under center, second down, straight drop, looks to throw, going deep down the sideline for Clark, incomplete, overthrown at the fifty yard line. He was defended on the play by Star Stokes. Over ten in the passing game, with two interceptions for the. Uh, Montville Indians. And Tough night. Not really letting anything develop. He just pretty much lo- just let it loose yeah, the yard line. Yeah. Bring up third and second, uh, third and long. So, yesterday I turned on the radio in the morning on the Boston Sports Channel. Sure. You've, now you've got the Red Sox were prepared to make their playoff appearance that night. Right. you got Tom Brady coming back. The greatest right? of all time. Tom Brady coming back on Sunday. Yes. You've got the Celtics in the preseason. Yeah. You got the Bruins in the preseason. Yeah. And I listened to them talk for eight minutes about Hillary and Trump. I turned it off. I said, I want. <laughs> you want sports talk? I got full, wait, is there a better time in Boston yeah, sports than right now? sports talk. Hall, straight drop, looking to throw, pressured, and he's sacked. All the way back at the 10 yard line by Major Roman. A major sack at the 10 yard line. First time we've called his name in a big way on a defensive end. D Major Roman from a defensive end position going in and making hay on the quarterback. Luke Hall's had a very, very tough night back there for the Indians. I, mean, I understand talking politics I don't know, maybe on a slow sports day, but you had the Red Sox in the playoffs. Yeah, I that can't. Night. I can't. I yeah. I can't deal with that stuff. Yeah, Tom Brady. You have four of yeah. the biggest sports stories going on in Boston. We're talking. We're talking politics for for thirty minutes. See, sport? my other my other problem too with the sports talk and you know you know about my show that I do on Saturday mornings is you know I I can't. I, I can't talk about I, – I don't want – I don't bring up Odell Beckham and stuff like that, but I want to talk about guys in the field. I want to talk about the plays. I want to talk about the numbers. You know, I want to talk about the players. You know, I'm tired of talking about the stories. And I think that that's where sports talk has gone these days. It's going more for the stories. What's happened off the field? What's going on in somebody's personal life? Who cares? Yeah, I mean, the biggest sports story – I mean, the, the San Francisco 49ers have been all have been dominated this year by Colin Kaepernick talk. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It just, all ties into politics, and it's, uh, yeah, it takes away from what you want to do. You think it takes point. away from what's going on on the field, like, like, like the Broncos, okay? You, you, you're high on the Broncos. They've, you know, Peyton Manning retires. Uh, they patch in a couple guys at quarterback. The defense is nasty. They don't miss a beat. Those are some of the things that I want to hear about as a sports fan. And I agree with you, and I think that's, you know, what most Who leads the league in rushing? We don't even know. Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. 
Now, you have Mrs. Voice of Game Day here. You wanted to talk to her about why there was no snacks in the booth? That yeah. Was, that was... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because you know, I, I, you know, every halftime, in right, case you want to talk, call this punt, but every halftime, hang on. Clark with a bullet punt. It bounces off of a whaler and bounces out at the 12-yard line. So what a break for the whalers. It'll be first and 10 New London at the Montville 12-yard so line. So I got to share with uh, Mrs. Voice of Game Day. Every You know, when I do the halftime, the sports talk, the halftime show, you know, I talk sports and talk to the Stack Guru 2.0. Casey and the junior voice take a walk. They go to the concession stand. They come back with big goods. They come back with treats. The, the booth, am I right? Every time. I, every time. So I asked myself, I said, you know, I said, Casey, you, you left? Are you with your family? Mrs. Voice? No big goods tonight. Nobody brought nothing. Now, I went no to pump, wait in line. No and pumpkin muffins. It's a, testament, it's a testament to the crowd tonight. There was such a line at the concession stand, I couldn't get the big goods. There's a little 11-year-old girl running around selling brownies. I couldn't I couldn't. I mean, it. like, I it's, I don't understand it. I have nothing to eat. Tonight. You realize that at the next game, Mrs. Voice is going to have an entire catered affair in here for you <laughs> because of that. First and ten, New London. Gomez under center, straight drop, looking to throw, looking in the corner for Roman. Roman with a jump ball with Johnson, and a touchdown! Major Roman! How did he take that away from Bradley Johnson? But he did! Wow, what a play, Major Roman! Well, then you see, you can't teach height right there. Six foot five. Two receptions, 43 yards for Major Roman. And he's a guy, all you have to do is throw it up there and let him go get it and make a play. Yeah, Major Roman that time. I mean, Bradley Johnson couldn't defend it any better. He's got great hands out there, too. That's the thing. A concentration, stick with the ball, watch it into his, uh, into his bread basket that time. Major Roman. Snap good, extra point down, and it is drilled through the uprights. And it is good with 5.15 remaining here in the ballgame. 34 to nothing, Whalers. And they've been working that play, Casey. They've been working that play in the last couple possessions. You know what? They were a heck bent for leather and getting a touchdown out of that play. You know, if they came out on, mo on any given night and said, we're going to hand the ball off to Jacob Commander 35 times and we're going to throw 15 jump balls to Major Roman. They'd they probably would, be they, successful. They would probably beat almost every team they face. Right, right. Because, they've got, because those two guys are, are that skilled. But I, I, you can see they were going to get that play right. That, to me, is the New London staff saying, later in the season, we need to be able to execute that play. So we're going to work that play till we get it right. Yeah, we're, we're going to get our quarterback and our best receiver out there one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to throw him a ball, which he can make a play on. And that's the key to that play. Melquan Gomez has got to put the ball in a position where his receiver can go up and make a play on it. And at six foot five, you just got to get it in the field to play. Twice tonight. Once at the end of the first half and once there. Twice tonight, Melquan Gomez has put the ball up in the air for a jump ball situation with Major Roman. Right. And both times, Major Roman has come down with a football. 34 0, 515 remaining in the ball game. Whalers to kick off from their own 40. High spiraling kick comes down to Greg Clark at his own 15 yard line. He heads right and he's hit almost immediately, spins out of one tackle, but he will not avoid. The remainder of the tackles, and Clark will be down at the 22-yard line, where Montville will have its possession. First and 10, down 34 to nothing. Be a real tough spot right here now for the Montville Indians. Possibly try and uh, you know get something moving in a positive direction. There's not too much you could say right now, Casey. They played a real hard first half, and again, you know we talk about the momentum, the touchdown before the half, which made it 20 to nothing. It's probably a big deflator. For this Montville team. A, Just not enough bullets in the chamber right now. A 74-point swing from where they were last week. A 40 yeah. nothing victory over Ledger. Yeah. 74-point swing being down 34 to nothing here to New London. Hall under center, first and 10. Has the eye. Has Glidden. Hands the ball off to Glidden. Off a right tackle. Glidden tries to cut it back inside. Not much there. Gain of perhaps two. 11 carries for 11 yards for Glidden. He has had a very... Tough time running up against that New London defensive front. Looking forward next week to going to Old Lyme. Valley Regional. Is that where we're going? Valley Regional, Deep River. I, there are a lot of people out there I'm for gonna, the sports yeah, doctor. Gonna have to get the gonna have to get Google Maps. My, you're not gonna I gave you I gave you the uh, the roster the other day. No. You said you weren't gonna know the players up there. I gave you three. Oh you did. You told me Smith, Jones, and Johnson were the main three main players. Williams. There. Williams. Hall, straight drop, hands off to Glidden, nothing there, buried. Uh, before he can get back to the line of scrimmage, check that, make that Clark 
Uh, but still buried, still at the line of scrimmage, third and ten for the Indians. Yeah, things won't get any easier for this Montville ball club as they travel to Killingly next week on take on a uh, tough, tough Killingly Redmond team. We've seen them earlier this year, and it's a back-to-back games of of uh, tough competition from Montville. Back to the drawing board this week. Keep the kids up if you're Tanner Grove. Let's stick to our basics and uh, let's you know let's leave this game right here. As soon as this game is over for Montville, you move on to the next one. Bradley Johnson goes wide left on this third down and 10 play. 3.43 remaining here in the ball game. Hall on the little end around to Clark. And as we said before, that play's done. New London got fooled twice. And in the last three times it's been run, it's been a fumble recovery and two huge losses. Yeah, first couple of times they ran it, it was kind of a very crisp moving play. The last few times, very slow developing. And the New London defense is two or three steps in the backfield. Uh, before that play even gets off the ground. Yeah, it's the push of the interior line. Yeah. It's the tackles that are being are, are, are making a push right off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And so that, that play has really no They've time. They've won that battle out. all night. Yeah. 52 total yards for the Montville Indians thus far this evening. Clark with another line drive punt. Scooped up by the Whalers. And rumbling towards the end zone. Touchdown! New London High School on the wackiest punt return you will ever see. Wow. I'm, what can you say about that? That's the second time back-to-back punts we've seen something, uh, a bit of a skull shot like there in golf. I don't know what to say. That's back-to-back punts that have been line drives by Clark after early punts that were pretty good. Two line drive punts right off, I mean, right off the backside of a whaler and a touchdown return off a punt. Unlike, and it wasn't by Elijah Parker, it wasn't by one of those skill men, it's by an up back. 40 to nothing, New London. Low snap, kick is up on the extra point. Well done that time, it is good, and with 2.53 remaining, 41 to nothing, Whalers. Well, that's what you can say about that, Casey. It's just one of those things where, you know, just did not execute in the kicking game, and things have really gone sour here for this for this Montville uh, football team. 41-0, 2.53 remaining. Where, what, what game are we doing next week? We are doing North Brantford at Valley Regional. North Brantford at, at Valley. Valley. Now, I, I work out in that area. Right. I work out in the, uh, the Deep River area, Old Saybrook area, and people are excited really? about why. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I literally, i got to ask. I gotta, I'm not being, I'm not being sure. wise, guy. Why are we doing that game? Uh, Tim King is the head coach. Great guy. Not our normal catchment area. I'm very excited to go down the shoreline yeah. and get me. I'm very excited. Well, I mean, to listen, see a couple new teams. Valley Regional is not exactly the shoreline. No, North Brantford is. No, yeah, North Brantford is, yeah. North Brantford, Deep Rivers down there in, Deep the, River, Kinet- yeah. in the Connecticut River Valley. Oh, sure, it's not shoreline. Connecticut though, River Valley. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah, game. I think it'll be interesting. That's I a... don't know anything Nothing. about either school. Well, Nothing. I mean, do you know the mascots of either school? No. North the Char- Chargers? North Brantford Renegades? Warriors? Valley Regional is a warrior. Mike McLaughlin. Just ask Why Google. are you asking me? Just ask Google, baby. I'm doing a Coast Guard game next weekend. Line drive off the chest of Clark at the 10-yard line. He's going to try to get outside, and he breaks one tackle, heads to the sideline, and he will be ridden out at the 25-yard line by Monty Johnson. And Montville, with 240 remaining, will have one more possession, perhaps. Yeah, this game day staff, I mean, Stat Guru 2.0 to my right, I mean, he doesn't really know this, but, you know, we're, I mean, we're a couple of talented guys. You're doing some different things. You do your comedy on demand. You do the Steve Elsie and Friends. You do the uh, the Christmas season coming up with the steam train. I got a little couple, couple of things in the hopper. 2.15 and counting remaining here in the ball game. 41 to nothing. The Whalers on top in a very impressive display against Montville tonight. Scott Shoemaker is the uh, superintendent in North Brantford. I knew that. I knew that. No, you did not. I did know no, that. No, you needed Mike McLaughlin to tell me to relay that. the info. No, I needed Mike McLaughlin to tell me because I never would have remembered that, but I actually did know that. I never would have been able to re- recall it. Very talented. But it was bro. in the back. It was in the banks. It was in the memory banks. No recall, though, for me. Luke Hall, we're down under two minutes remaining. Hall's under center for the Indians. Pitch left to Glidden. Glidden cuts it back inside, spins off of Elijah Parker, and gets about four yards. The Sports Doctor is going to head down to the field, and as soon as this ball game is over, he will chit-chat with New London's Juan Roman, who's 
inaugural season with the Whalers will bring him to 4-0 and oh after they polish off the remainder of this one. Right now they're on top 41 to nothing over Moffitt with 1-16 remaining in the ball game. Clock is running. And a very impressive performance for the New London High School Whalers off of a bye week in the spotlight. Uh, Montville coming off of a 40-plus win, 40 oh, nothing win over Ledger last week. Uh, really thought they were going to come into this thing on a high, and New London has really kind of taken the life out of them early and with some em emphasis here in the second half. 41 nothing, Whalers on top. I'm joined by the junior voice of game day. Junior voice, how are you? I am good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. What do you think of the Whalers' performance thus far? Well... By, by the way, judging that they're winning 41 to nothing, I think they're doing pretty well. <laughs> have you actually been watching, or have you been playing, uh, playing t you know, oh. fo t touch football with your cousin? Oh, no, I've been. You're more impressed with the Whalers' offense or their defense? Well, I think their offense, only because this is the first time, and I play Madden and I play all that, that I've seen Major Roman get a touchdowns, and he's a tight end, which is kind of, you don't expect a tight end to get a lot of touchdowns in this game. So you impressed with Major Roman, how he went after and got that touchdown that jump ball with, with Bradley Johnson? Yeah, I mean, he's a high school kid, and that, uh, that's surprising. And you don't see that. All right, minute three seconds remaining here. We've got a timeout on the field, officials timeout. We're going to say Montville. Montville has got their done now, and we're going to have a change in the game here. Montville with 103 remaining. They're going to... Run a couple plays here. Second and five. Pitch They're to Glidden. Going to pitch it. Glidden cuts it inside. Major Roman in on the tackle. Nothing there. Nice pressure that time by Major Roman. Well, it, it's kind of confusing. It kind of bewilders me that the defense has the same people on the offense. Yep, they play both directions. Major Roman is, my, as, is as good a defensive end as he is a tight end. My friend Daniel, who plays with the Colts, shout out to him, he plays cornerback and quarterback. And that's surprising because I didn't know that he would play cornerback and quarterback. All right, here we go. Third down and long for Montville. Hall under center. Hall pitches right to Glidden. Glidden tries to get to the outside. Nice cut back inside for Austin Glidden and finally ridden out of bounds by Key. Excuse me, ridden to the ground by Keon Wilbur. And that will probably be the last play of the ball game. We're down under six seconds remaining. And that will do it. Your score, New London High School, 41, Montville, nothing. We will send it down in a moment to the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, who's down on the field. He's going to be talking with New London head coach Juan Roman here in a moment. But junior voice of game day, uh, of all of, you've been to all of the games we've seen so far. Who's been the most impressive team that you've seen so far in the high school year? In New London. I mean, I haven't seen the team reach over 40 points, not even 30 points this year. And also, they just <coughs> creamed Montville 41 to nothing. And that just bewilders me how they can get so many points. So their teams are down on the field now, shaking hands as we're about ready to, to head out. The Whalers with a 41 to nothing victory over the Montville Indians. The great Ron Adams taking the picture of the junior voice of game day. Now, once upon a time, when I was in my in my took me took me to be 15, 16 years old before your grandfather would let me get on the radio and talk. So you're uh, you're jumping the gun here. The junior voice of game day, only eight years old. We're waiting now on the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. He is down on the field looking to talk to New London head football coach. Juan Roman, and as soon as he gives us the thumbs up, we will send it down on the field to, and here we go, down to Keith O'Brien. Coach Juan Roman, two things you talked about coming in this ballgame, execution and toughness. Happy with both? Not execution. We did what we had to do as far as get it done. I would say we were tough enough to get stopped their run game, and that's what they want to do. When you stop them, you know what they want to do. That's tough. You guys won the line of scrimmage up front on both ends of the ball, defensively and offensively. I don't want to be rude, but 54 was killing us all game. And that kid, if he doesn't make all that, 
this time. No one will. So we did what we had to do, but 54, if he needs a reference for a job or anything else, let me know because he, he earned it. All right, now moving forward, how good can this team be, Coach, uh, you know, throughout the rest of the season? Well, I mean, I was surprised that we could leap off. It made us a little more sluggish than I thought they would, but uh, the sky's the limit. You know, we did score 41 points, and I think we probably left another three or four scores out there. So um, we could be pretty good. Ready to roll for next week? Stones and Bears. All right, Coach, go get it.